replay. Fans, I would ask that you direct your attention to the center aisle of the Memorial Field Grandstand and join me as we welcome captains number 52, Connor O'Donnell, number 54, Alex Mullen, number 57, Stephen Wojo Wojciechowski, and number 87, Connor Pease, and the rest of our Green Wave football team onto the field for tonight's game. Fans, at this time, I ask you to redirect your attention to the top step of the Memorial Field Grandstands. It is now my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you the man that invented and embodies the term Green Wave Pride, friend and mentor to thousands of former and current student athletes, a beacon of the Abington community, for the final time at this hallowed stadium, in his 50th year, head coach Jim Kelleher! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Abbott and Greenway Football, and we just witnessed history 
in the making, a legacy coming close to his end, a great welcome to uh, set up the fond farewell to Coach Jim Kelleher, 50 years as the head coach here at Memorial Field for the Avenue Green Wave. My name is Sean Riley. We tonight, Kevin Whale. And Kevin, that was kind of a real poignant scene there. Very nice moment. I think, you know, you had every decade covered there, yeah. Sean, that the coaches... Ladies uh, and gentlemen, you know, one more time entering the field for the 50th the year. Teams, the all final the different teams that he had. Nice uh, Jim tribute Kelleher. to the coach. Well deserved. He's done a great job over the last 50 years. And we're looking forward to uh, having a great couple of last games here with the Green Wave. Beautiful night for football, and it's fitting that it is great weather and a great night and a great crowd of alumni. Like you said, Kevin, I was seeing guys who played here in the 80s and 70s all throughout the last few decades. we got Angelo Scascia, the head referee tonight, um, who we haven't seen in a while. He's one of the uh, icons of the referee. Absolutely. Group. Angelo is, uh, you know, guaranteed to get you out under two hours. <laughs> he's a, he's a, a great official. The captains will be going to midfield. This You can see Coach Kelleher greeting some of his uh, alumni. Uh, we really appreciate the alumni for being here. And Coach Mike Del Grasso, one of his assistant coaches up from North Carolina, from the Carolinas. Angelo Scasha, the referee, has got his microphone on to talk was, at midfield. I was on the first team that Mike Del Grasso coached, a freshman team back in 1975. Well, not that, you know, dating myself there. Okay, well, listen, referee Scasha, for a moment. Your coach told you what to do if you win. <laughs> well, of course, you've got the Green Wave captains. This is their last okay. old game here tonight, Sean. Well, get Connor Pease, number 87, number 54. Okay, what's up there, pal? 54 Alex Green, Mullen. Alex Mullen, 52, Connor O'Donnell, number 57, of course, Bodie Johnson. Now, Steve teams, Wojcikowski, I'm sorry, Steve today, Wojcikowski. Pal. Bodie Johnson, 76. Wojo himself. Yeah, Wojo, 57. Oh. Uh, I can always play another Mets tonight, Sean. They're going to defer. All right. Having to defer the toss. Pembroke is going to accept the kick. And we'll be getting, putting this game uh, into into gear here very soon. Uh, Abner comes to this game with a 6-3 and three record. Plymouth Titans come in with a 3-6 and six records. But do not I'm let that be a reflection of the quality of the Titans. They are a very strong team and a very strong conference. Yep. They play in the Patriot League. Well, this is a step up division wise for the Green Wave. Yeah. Pa uh, Pembroke is a Division 5 team. We're a Division 6 team. Um, they play the likes of Plymouth North, Situate, Quincy North, Quincy Hanover, Plymouth South, Archbishop Williams. Uh, last week they beat Archbishop Williams 50 to 25. And uh, they have a very talented and flexible offense. They can throw the ball at some great wide receivers. And they also have a strong running game. Their quarterback is number two, Owen Pace, is a junior. So I think we're going to see a lot of action out here on the gridiron tonight. We're looking forward to a great game. We're going to pause for a minute for the playing our national anthem. And it is uh, Veterans Day weekend, so we'll pause Ladies to get Chris Nagel on the PA system. Tomorrow is Veterans Day, and Abington High School and Pembroke High School would like to take a moment to recognize some true heroes in our audience this evening. To honor our veterans, we ask that all retired veterans and current members of the armed forces please stand and raise your hand so that we can recognize your presence and thank you for your service to our country. Thank you all for your commitment to the United States of America. And now, please stand if you aren't standing and remove your hats. And join me as we honor all that have served and continue to serve our country, giving their all to keep us free and safe with the playing of our national anthem. Tonight is being performed by the Abington High School Marching Band under the direction of Mr. Tim Leonelli.
Well, fans, we're looking to a, a great game here tonight, the second to last game of the season. Green Wave coming in tonight, is six and three. And uh, fans recognizing Pembroke is, the veterans uh, this said, evening. You know, plays we a really tough schedule. Special announcement over so looking forward to a great game. I, I don't know if Pembroke can play. I haven't been to Pembroke and played very often. Of course, Pembroke used to be part of Civil Lake many years ago. Game, Mr. Angelo Scotia, thank you for your service, referee Scotia. Angelo Scotia being recognized. So, Sean, Pembroke, is, uh, has Abington played Pembroke in the No, we, I don't think we've ever played. We were talking before the game with some of the coaches. I don't remember ever playing. Pembroke used to be part of Silver Lake. Lake right. And we had not have played Silver Lake in the past. In fact, we played Silver Lake earlier this year. Right. But Pembroke now has their own high school, the right. Titans. I think the Pembroke kind of broke off, what, mid-90s or late-90s maybe? So kind of fairly new high school. We do play them in basketball in some of the Sean Carter tournaments. Um, but... They are a very talented team, as I mentioned. Green Wave has some talent out there, too. It's the last home game, obviously, for the Green Wave. I mentioned that. And yeah. other than Thanksgiving, this is the last game of the season. Uh, to go through some of the seniors, of course, you got Ryan uh, Simonetti, William LeBlanc. You've got Nate Duggan, Aiden McClellan, A.J. Nash, number 29, 51, Andrew Kerr, Connor O'Donnell, number 52, 54, Alex Mullen, and 57, Captain Steven Wojciechowski, and then Farza Ahmad. Yep. And Bodie Johnson, Connor Orlando, Orlandella, and Connor Pease, of course, number 87. Michael Riley will be kicking off left to right across your television screen to the Titans. Um, I've seen some of the couple of tapes I've, re I've watched. They've run back at least two kickoff returns uh, earlier this year. Jaden Leonard, number 18, was on the near side on the 10-yard 10, 10 line. And over on the far side, I can't see his number because he's got his arms folded. Yeah. Oh, appreciate Pembroke being patient 34. during that ceremony, of course. It's Brendan Kanya. And it's an onside kick at the 49 yard line. Be recovered by the Titans. So they will get great field position to start the game with 12 minutes on the clock, or really 11.59 now. I think you're going to see them probably throw everything out there tonight, Sean. And why not? Exactly, why not? You'll probably see some trick plays. You know, this is a, a night to celebrate, and I think you'll see some. Uh, you know, everyone having a good time. So Owen Pace, the junior quarterback, will get under the, on the center, will probably be in shotgun. Holtz, Nehemiah Holtz, number one, out wide to the far side. They said two wide outs to the near side. Number 34, Brendan Kanya, good running back, is behind the quarterback. An offset to his left. We can't see the number at this point. Put a man in motion. They give to Kanya up the middle. Big number 34. Oh, big stick. Yeah. And the ball's Ball's on the ground. Out. Ball is loose on the first play from scrimmage. You're going to mark that as a uh, second down. And a pickup of maybe half a yard. The helmet, his helmet looks different, like it almost has a covering on it or something, Sean. Number 34. It's Yeah, he does. You know. Maybe one of those uh, concussion, concussion protocols. protocols, yeah. So bring up second down. They give him no gain on the play, second and 10. Well, good job by nice the Green hit. Wave defense there. Of course, you know, you got Connor Pease down there, and Nate Duggan's number 11 has been great, uh, done a great job for the Green Wave as an outside linebacker. LaRosa's been up in there. You got Connor O'Donnell, number 52 in there, 51 also. Andrew Kerr. Pace in the shotgun. Puts a man in motion, hands to the motion man, trying to get around the far side, trying to turn the corner. He's been strung out nicely, still on his feet, and now going to be taken down for a loss by the Green Wave. Nice job by the Green Wave, stretching it out out there. I didn't see the player that got up in there. But Green Wave did a nice job kind of stretching out, and then he got a little help. Get a, about a two-yard loss there. Of course, Leader. we also have Jonathan Chop Hart, who's um, Hunt, who has had a great uh, season as well for the Green Wave. Brings up a third in a long 12, maybe 13 here. Call it 12, third and 12 at the 47. So we'll see if they go to the air in this one. As I mentioned, they do like to throw. They have a, one of the most talented receivers is, uh, who was it? Oh, Will McNamara, number five. And he lines up in the near side out close to the Abington bench. There's three on the left, one receiver out wide to the right. He's got Salamini on him. Pace looking to throw. He's looking this way, throwing up in the air, and it's going to be overthrown. I'm not sure if that was intended for number five, Will McNamara, who was double covered, but he also had a man streaking down the sidelines behind him. Yeah, A.J. Nash was coming over the top to cover 34. And you could see the – the, and I don't know if uh, Salamini just went with the eye – because the quarterback was eyeing number five the whole way, Sean. It looked like he just read his eyes and kind of came underneath. So it looked like the ball punt. was overthrown. Hunter Burke will be here, number number 55, to punt. Of course, back deep for the green wave is 
Salamini number two and number 29, A.J. Nash for the green wave. Nash in the white sleeves, Salamini in the black sleeves. Hunter the punter standing at his own 36. Puts nice a nice high kick. kick. Going to go down towards Salamini's direction. Gets hit after he nice. ball hits the ground, but it's recovered by the green wave. Johnny on the spot there. Yeah, it was LeBlanc. LeBlanc number six, nice job there. Don't want to give that up. Nice high kick. That was a nice high kick. I was going to say, that ball might have been a little wet coming down, Sean. It was so high. <laughs> a little precipitation on it. 10.02 on the clock here, and this so will be the Green, green Wave's yep, first green, possession. Green Wave will take over at up to 27. 27 yard line. Michael Riley, the junior quarterback. Both teams have the junior quarterbacks out there. Angela Scotia wearing the white hat for this game. And the Green Wave in the huddle now come out to the line of scrimmage. They send Maxwell out wide to the near side of a big game last year. Our last game, I'm sorry. Connor Pease out wide to the far side. Riley's in the shotgun. Man in motion. Riley rolling now, stepping up, looking, thinking about running. He does. He's going to go down the right sideline. Gets the first down and more, then steps out of bounds with about a pickup of about 17, 18 yards. Nice read. That whole Pembroke side kind of collapsed yeah. to the left side, just leaving a whole lane out in the left flat there for Riley to take advantage of. Nice job of reading that. Kind of kept him at... Uh, Kept the defense second guessing too by kind of holding the pass back right until he got over the line of scrimmage there. Kind of reminded you a little bit of like Jack Reardon's style of play, didn't it? Absolutely. Jack Reardon could move those legs, that's for sure. He's standing in front of us outside the press box. Did Jack Abington high and then Harvard. Harvard quarterback, that's right. First and 10 for Abington. They send one wide out to the far side again. It looks like Maxwell. Two backs in the backfield. They give it to Simonetti. Simonetti. As the defense come up on him, it'll be no gain, maybe pick up a half a yard, maybe one they give him. Be second and nine at the 45 of the Green Wave. Well, defensive battle so far here tonight, Sean. Absolutely beautiful night here. November, what is it, the 10th of November? 10th of November. 2023. Happy birthday to all the Marines out there. Tonight That's is right. their birthday, right? November 10th. Glenma Point being one of them. 42 degrees, no wind, no rain, says Donna Summer. All right, Pease out wide to the far side, Maxwell to the near side with slots in each on each side. Riley's got Nash standing to his right. Now they load up again on the near side. Riley rolling to his right. Riley looking downfield. He's looking for Simonetti. He's going to be overthrown and out of bounds. Fall incomplete. Three third down. Looking for Salamini on that. Good coverage no, that there. Yeah, good coverage there by the uh, by the Pembroke Titans. Coach James Kelleher, 50 years as the head coach. He was three years before that as assistant coach. Course. He played for four years. I think my favorite uh, memory, Sean, of course, is the 2002 team that won the Super Bowl. Yeah. The first Super Bowl was, of course, a great team. And the team actually before that, the year prior, was a very good team, yeah. too, with Christian LaPointe. I'm uh, not Christian LaPointe. Christian Allen and uh, Bobby Lacerda had some great players on that team as well. McSherry boys. 39, Abington again spreading out the offense. Riley barking his signals. And they call a timeout from the sideline. Coach Riley did saw something he didn't like, so they burned one of the three timeouts with 9.07 on the clock. I think he might have been getting nervous about a five-yard penalty there, Sean. Yep. It seemed like it was taking quite a while to get that ball off. So Tonight's coverage of the Pembroke Titans versus the Abingdon Green Wave is being brought to you by Abingdon Community Access and Media. Playback of this game and any Green Wave sports coverage can be found on the town's education channel, Comcast Channel 14 or Verizon Channel 26. For more information or a schedule of all games and channels and live stream, be sure to visit abandoncam.tv slash education. And tonight, working with us on the telecast is David Bone and Matt Lyons behind the cameras, along with Kevin Tachi and Ian Demon pro uh, producing the live stream and the replays for tonight. Thank you production. all. Nice effort. You know, Sean, I was going to say, Green, all these players have been so lucky that, you know, the last 30 years that we've had such talented cameramen from Bill Davis yep. did it for so many years. Mike and Russell. Mike Russell, many, many Ed years. Monty. And, yeah, exactly. So we had... Very fortunate the Greenway players are over the last several decades that they've been able to uh, have such a great, such a great, um, you know, camera crew yeah. being able to do this for them. So third and nine here for the Green Wave. I want to welcome everyone who's tuning in the live stream, especially from a big fan in Berlin, Berlin. Germany. Yeah. Are they at the, going to the Pats game? I think they are. That's uh, Connor Pease's mom is out in Berlin. Oh. In motion. Goes Salamini. Riley's back to pass. Looking across the middle of the big tight end. Jeez. Jeez, he gets the first down. Speak of the devil. That's right. Big gets body, it. right about 12-yard pickup for the Green Wave. First down at the 44-yard line. Moving the stakes for the Green Wave. 
And Abington now with a first and 10 at the 44, heading left to right across the television screen. Here's a replay of that last one. Watch Pease just kind of set right in the middle and beautiful, beautifully thrown pass right exactly. between the numbers. Uh, you know, nice uh, nice footwork work there by Riley, just following through with the ball, just a nice dart right to Pease. They say the good quarterbacks have the great footwork, which is, you know, an, you can have a strong arm, but you don't have the footwork, it's not going to work. I don't think you yeah, or I have it's going to be motioned there by the green wave. I was going to say, Sean, I don't think you or I have ever been accused of good footwork. No, that, yeah. that would be true. Yeah. Not on the uh, on the football field nor the yeah. dance floor. That's definitely true. Great to see a lot of the alumni here earlier. I wish I had more time before the game to talk to them. Offsides, oh. Wow. wow. Offsides. So oh, a five-yard penalty against the Titans. Titans, wow. That'll make it first and five for Abington. I thought I saw a little motion here on the green wave side, but it must have been after the snap. We'll take that. So first and first and five here from the 39, Sean. You know, this definitely gives the green wave an opportunity here to yeah. uh, maybe go a little, you know, a little deep. See what they dial up. Maxwell out wide near side. Got Simonetti on the left side wing, Salamini on the near side wing. He goes in motion. Looking to throw again is Riley. Riley trying to let his receiver release. He was looking for Salamini to get tied up, and Riley's going to just throw it out of bounds. Good decision there to keep the line of scrimmage up at the forty at the 39. Yeah. It's, that's exactly what you want to do. You don't want to throw it downfield and risk the, the uh, interception there and the turnover. So you get second down here and then five. See if the Green Wave will probably keep it on the ground, try to keep the chains moving, get that first down. For your viewers at home to know the dedication that Kevin Whalen puts in this game. <laughs> Kevin had shoulder surgery two days ago, and uh, he they basically discharged himself from the hospital just this morning. I did, too. And he's uh, here in a sling. In a sling and, you know. Still a little loopy, I hear. I am. Well, More I'm, so than normal. I, yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how can you tell. <laughs> A.J. Nash, the sole running back behind Riley right now, second and five. Riley puts Salamini in motion, gives to Salamini. Salamini turns it up field, dives forward. It's going to be oh, – Is that well, a ball? The ball? I don't no, know. It's, it's going to be about two yards okay. short of the first. I thought there was a fumble too. I know. The way, the, way that, the way that – I know. Everyone kind of reacted that there was a fumble there, but it's about yeah, three-yard pickup there, so it makes it third and two. Well, I don't know how long I'm going to be able to make it, Sean, but I'll do what I can, you know. We've got Dana Maxwell in the wings he's if you get – in the a, bullpen warming up. A little groggy. Yeah. But we appreciate you being here, Kevin. I know you wanted to be here. For Coach Kell. Absolutely. Coach Kell was, you know, very, you know, meaningful coach to me. And just, uh, you know, everyone in my family, my brother Sean, we, you know, all had a, a great relationship with Coach Kelleher. Also here tonight. Oops, Sean. Riley on the center gives right side. First. Dive forward for the first down for Abington. Nice job of the Abington offensive line pushing forward to give A.J. Nash all the room he needed to move the stakes. So nice job by the Green Wave offensive line on that right side, just pushing that pile to pick up that three yards for that first down. You may notice big number 74 for the Titans, Patrick Norman. He's one of their captains. He is the largest man, the largest body on the field. He's right in the middle of the line there. And uh, Abington's going to do what they can to kind of not let him take control of the line of scrimmage. Right. Riley to throw once again, looking for Maxwell. But he's being chased now. He leaves it up for Maxwell in the end zone, and it's going to be incomplete. Thank goodness. <laughs> Riley couldn't set because he had pressure. Maxwell ran a nice route there, kind of a little Z out. And it'll bring up, though, a second down. And that's a ball where if Riley was able to set his feet and throw it, he, he had, you know, he did have Maxwell deep. You know, problem was, you know, when you not don't have your feet set, the ball goes up in the air, and then, you know, it gives the defense time to react to that. So second and ten for the green wave. Here's the replay. Riley rolling. You can see him getting the pressure and throws it as he's spinning, just trying to get all he can under it, but goes incomplete, fells, goes through the defender's hands, luckily for Abington. 6.37 on the clock here in the first quarter. This is the opening drive for the Green Wave after the Pembroke Titans went three and out. Second and 10. Connor out wide to the far side. Maxwell wide to the near side. Riley again in the shotgun with Nash standing to his right. Riley keeps it, going to the left side. He's got a hole. Riley inside the 25 goes the forward. First. I think he may have it there, he does, Kev. He does have the first. He was able to get just inside yep. the 22 to get that first down. Nice job. Nice read by Riley. And I think, you know, that's one thing, That's one thing, Sean. Teams don't really expect, right. you know, from the green wave. We really haven't had, like, that type of running quarterback. Right up on the line of scrimmage, first and 10. Abington, they're going to hand off, trying to sweep to the right side. Simonetti cuts it back, goes against the grain. 
puts his head and shoulders down and gets it inside the 20. He picks wow. up about three where there was nothing. I know that was great work just getting back to that line of scrimmage and making a positive yardage out of that uh, play. Kind of really was cut back about four yards behind the line of scrimmage, but was able to cut back across the grain to get that ball down to the 20. And this is the type of drive you like the Greenway. Mixing it up a little bit, Sean, but you yep. know, kind of keeping the chains moving. See what they do here from the ball marked right at the 20 yard line, second and eight. Nash lines up right to the right of Riley. They have three receivers stacked to the left. It's a direct snap to Riley, Riley and he's going to spin around, gets pinwheeled around, and gets dives forward for the first down. Keeps moving the pile, though. Gets down to the eight yard line, about a what, 10 yard pickup there by Riley. Yeah, I was talking to one of the coaches at the end of last game. And they said some of the teams underestimate Riley. He looks like he's like a thin, wiry kid, but he's solid. This kid's been in the weight room for the last two years, really just adding to the, his game. And you can see how tough he is there, bouncing off people. Well, the other thing is, too, leading, legs going. you know, doing what a lot of other teams, you know, have done to the Green Wave this year, which is kind of, you know, let everybody else lead into the hole and then him follow. Yeah. You know, he's been successful so far tonight for the Green Wave, mixing first, it up a little bit. First goal at the eighth, Salamini. Bounces left it side. Up. He should have it. On his feet and a oh, flag they're gonna thrown. Call. They're going to be holding. It's a touchdown, but hold the door. I'm not calling touchdown Man of Muskegon just yet, Sean. And it's going to be hold. a hold against Abington. Yeah, right at the tackle spotish there on the offensive line. Simonetti had a nice run there, Sean. Was able to bounce it back outside there after yeah. the initial hit to pick up that yardage. He did but, a nice job. So they'll mock it off. From the spot of the penalty, I believe. Yeah, and that's the hard thing. The Green Wave, you know, has to kind of finish these drives. So now it'll be um, with the ball placed at the 15-yard line, first and goal. 4.58 on the clock here in the first quarter. Get the clock down. Get the clock going, right? Oh, second down, he's saying. Oh. Sorry. First down. First yeah, down. There you go. First, first down. down, okay. Yeah. Do we have third? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Half up on the line of scrimmage to the green wave. They put a man in motion. Riley going to throw. Stepping. Turning. He's going. He's on his feet inside the He's 10. Going. Riley inside the 5. Touchdown, man of Muskegon! Michael Riley from 15 yards out. Goes to the far side into the corner of the end zone. And puts the green wave on the board. But first for tonight on Jim Kelher's final game here at Memorial Field. What a nice read by Riley, though. Kind of let everybody clear out on that left side. And as soon as they did, he was able to tuck it and run and get that 15-yard pickup. Nice job by Riley. Looked like he may have intended to be throwing to Pease, but Pease got tripped up by one of the defenders. And Riley then just adjusted immediately and put six on the board for the green wave. He's going to be here to kick two. Duggan will hold. Bodie Johnson with a snap. Nope. Is it? Nope. Tough. No, it is good. It's good. Good job by Duggan to put that one up. I think that was about 10 feet, one inches. I don't think we had much to spare with that, but it was good. Counts put seven on the board for the Green Wave. So the Green Wave took that ball. Where do we go? We went 73 yards there on that drive. And as you said, Kev, they really mixed it up well. The bulk was, of that was Riley probably had about, what, 35 yards on the ground there. Yeah. He had two good, you know, 10, 15-yard runs. So that's his third rushing touchdown of the year. Of course, and he's a junior, so he'll be back next year for the Green Wave. So 7 nothing with 4.47 on the clock here. And Abington will be kicking off to the Titans. You know, it says a lot, Kev, um, one of the things we noticed, that the assistant coaches for Abington, Scott Pfeiffer, Dave Lyons, Jason Brown, Mike Bruning, Bella Cabongo, Keith Faxon, Kalonji Cabongo, and Ed Riley are all former players for Jim Kelleher. They've all been here a long time, too. That's so, right. You know? And then we also helped out, but Jim Daly has been here for a long time, right. since, you know, for the he, last 25 he, years. years yep. And then, of course, uh, Tom Shepard, who's our head, uh, one of our uh, freshman coaches, also is assistant at the varsity level. So the Green Wave will kick off. Their first kickoff earlier was an onside kick. I don't expect to see that here. But a it's a little pooch. pooch kick up over the initial line. It's rolling and picked up at the 33-yard line. And Duggan, what a nice, play. Nice job by Duggan. Number 30 there for the for the kickoff was return was 
Rice Dutton, and you had Duggan on the tackle. Did a nice job there. That was like laser quick just coming in there. And the ball going to be marked at about, what, a 32? 30, 30. Looks like they give him 32 yard line. Here's a replay. I see Duggan staying wide on the outside, which he's trained to do, and a nice job tripping up the return, the receiver there. So important that people stay in their lanes on those special teams, make sure they you know cover their responsibilities. Duggan doing a nice job there. So they get the eye backfield now behind pace. Now they shift. And stack it up on the right side. They're going to pitch to the right. Student body right. Gets over the line oh, of scrimmage. He's got some room. He's on his feet, number 34. And he's going to be breaking away. He might go all the way here, Kev. Kind of and it's going to be a quick answer by the Titans from 73 yards away. That Brendan, was number 34, Brendan, Brendan Kanya. Kanya. Kanya, yep. Just a power run there at the Green Wave. So we thought we'd right see back a lot at of action. You. I know it. Green Wave was able to stop them there on their first drive. You can see the replay here. They load up on the right-hand side. Oh, they didn't. They cut it short, but they just load up on the right side. Just a power run. He had he had several blockers downfield, clearing the way for him. 68-yard rush it was for Kanya, the elder of the two Kanya brothers. And they'll go for two. They don't kick the extra point, and they hand off to the right side. Kanye again with the shoulders down. No, he does no. not get it. Wow, so Green Wave maintained the one-point lead, 7-6. 4.30 to go here in the first quarter. Green Wave up 7-6. So we saw the breakaway speed by Kanye. We heard about it, and we just saw it. And there was a nice blocking on the right side, and you saw how they just kind of – He's a big kid, too. He's yeah. not a small kid, so number 34. Nice running back there for Pembroke. The senior. Four and a half minutes to go in the first uh, quarter. So obviously the Titans' second possession was much more fruitful than their first possession. Absolutely. And we got uh, Bula Blank back deep for the Green Wave, along with AJ Nash, number six and number twenty-nine. Kicking off is number fifty-five. Is Hunter. Burke Hunter Burke? Obviously, the Green Wave respect their return ability there, Sean, by you yep. know doing the pooch kicks and things like that, keeping it away from their return men. And we'll see what Mr. Burke does here. He had a nice high kick earlier from the as a punter. Coach Steve Alborn is this is his fourth year at Pembroke, really turning the program around. And the kick is a line drive kick. And it's going to stay in bounds. Yep. Picked up at the 13 yard line by Nash. Nash up to about the 20, 20. and then taken down. Right at the 20. So they give him the forward progress to the 20. That's a tough spot because it looked like it might be going out. Yeah. But you don't want to be that guy who lets it bounce in. In bounds, I know. And just couldn't wait any longer. By that time, too, it kind of pinched down where the coverage from Pembroke was able to pinch down and kind of pin him in. So Green Wave got 80 yards here to go for the uh, for the score. Jim Kelleher is the first coach in the history of Massachusetts high school football to serve as a head coach of the same high school for 50 years in wow. a row. That's an amazing uh, feat. Of course, he was a assistant coach for several years there as well, too, at Abington. Give to Nash right up the middle, quick hitter. And he's going to pick up about three on the play. And bring up a second down for Abington. So Coach Kell probably started, what, in the early 70s coaching? 1971 as the 71. assistant coach, 71, 72, 73. Yep, so and then became the head coach in 1974. 53 years is a long time. Five state titles in 2002, 2005, 2012, 2014, 2019. We were at Gillette just a couple of years ago, two yep. years ago, yeah. Two years ago. I had uh, noticed, well, I'll read this a little bit later, Some, uh, just how many generations and decades of families and students that he's affected. Riley in the shotgun, two receivers line out to the right, two running backs in the backfield, Riley rolling. He's got the running backs blocking and a little out pattern to Maxwell. Maxwell. No, nope, incomplete? No, I think he got it. Did he get it? No. Nope. No, nope. I say it's incomplete. Yeah. The um, well, Adam Nash, he played for Kel, right? Yeah. Yeah, Adam Nash and the Nash brothers. If you so second generation, he's had a lot of second generations and McGuire's, you know, Steve Riley's. McGuire and the McGuire boy, Riley's, you know, so. 
Nice replay there. 50 years is a long time, and, you, you know, you're going to have a lot of uh, the kids of kids, which is, you know, really a nice tribute to the coach that, the you know, parents want their kid, you know, to be coached by the guy that coached them. Wide out to each side for Riley with a sec uh, third and seven, looking to throw, looking to try to set up a screen. Now he dumps it underneath, and good play. Going to get Pease at the, about the 24-yard line. He's going to bring up a fourth down here. So likely a punting situation there for the Green Wave. That was a screen that took seemed like it took forever to set up. I don't, I, I yeah. don't know if that was an intentional. I think there's just a lot of traffic downfield. You no, know, Pembroke doing a nice job of tightening up on that. Uh, you know, and I think you know the other thing they might have done is trying to like make sure that they corral Michael Riley. Yeah, fourth and six here. Bodie Johnson comes out on the snap. Two receivers are standing about the, at the Pembroke 47 yard line. High nice, kick going to come down right about 45 fair and called, a fair yeah. catch at the 46 yard line by Brendan Kenya. Good punt by Nash. So with 2.39 left here on the clock, Abington with a 7 to 6 lead, but a very tough Ab uh, Pembroke offense is back on the field now. See with the Green Wave defense if they can stiffen up again and get the ball back for the offense. So 2.39 to go in the first quarter. Ball at the 46 yard line. High backfield behind pace. They pitch to the eye back. That is Kanye again trying to get around outside. He uh -oh, does. Going. He's wow. got some running room once again. Kanye going down the field. Cuts back, still on his feet. Green jersey trying to get to a flag uh, thrown. A block. Yeah, there's a block there. Right Might now. be a saving grace. That yeah. was going to be a 54 yard touchdown. And laundry on the field. I mean, Riley was trying to roll off either way just to try to get uh, you know into the mix there and was held so it's going to be a, a 10 yard penalty there from the hold at the 10 maybe at the 12. yeah it looks like they are marking the penalty at about the 14 yard line maybe the 13 13 yeah so come back out 10 yards from there be the 23 first down angelo scotcher on the microphone you got to love that first down. Uh, no, no, he makes. He's got that. Uh, the little jump in the pep jump in the, the step, step there, yeah. Well, yeah. Angelo is the, uh, I don't know if he's still state rep for, nope. uh, no, he left. 42 the, years. 42 years. He was the dean of the house for many years from, from High Park, represented High Park for many, many years. He was very excited when I gave him the microphone earlier. I know. He's... <laughs> Ball to 24, first and 10. Wide out to the near side. Again, eye backfield, Kanye, the deep man in the eye. Pace under center. Gives the county coming around the left side. Tackled right away. Come right up. That's number 22 for the Green Wave. Doing a nice job coming up and filling that hole. Aiden McClellan. One of the seniors for the Green Wave out there. That's what you're going to do. You're going to have to bring some of that help up, Sean. Some of those safeties. Bring them up into those holes to fill it to make sure you don't get the, give up those long runs. Because they really, when they get that push, they get some big boys out front and they can really push the pile. Yeah, the linebackers. You know, just lead them downfield. Just under two minutes to go here. The ball remains at the 24-yard line, second and 10. Again, the eye backfield. Now they shift over. They're going to do that same run to the right. They pitch to the right. Kanyan, with it, again, gets hit at the line of scrimmage, drives forward, though. He only gets it up to about the 20 on that one. Nice job by the Green Wave kind of reading that. That's the same play that they've scored the touchdown on. Brendan Kanyan. We have third down at the 21. You know, all you need is someone to penetrate that, you know, the, the front there and get around the backside like there, and it's only about a three-yard pickup. So nice job by the Green Wave. Third, down and seven for the Titans. third and seven, according to Chris Nagel on the public address system here at Memorial Field. Now they put Kanye out wide to the near side as a receiver. Shotgun formation for Pace. Owen Pace boxed his cadence. And whistles, motion. He's going to move him back five yards. It's going to be third and 12. I want to send a shout-out to our loyal fans down in the Cape. Deb and Jill along tonight. They're being joined by Sheila and my boy PJ. Wow. Yeah. Hello to the crew. 
The Cape Crew over you know, the bridge. Do you know PJ's from Wakefield? I know. I knew that. Hmm. I did Which know. is right next to Stoneham. I heard Stoneham used to beat the crap out of him in hockey, though. All the time. It wasn't hard. <laughs> I'm going to hear that later. 40, <laughs> 45 seconds and rolling. Third and 12 now. Kanye now is the slot back on the left side. Slot receiver. Pace to throw. Pace had some pro problems rushing. Throwing. Puts it up for grabs in the end zone. And it's going to be touchdown. touchdown. What a grab in the back of the end zone. Well, Green Wave was there. They just couldn't come up with the ball. That was able to get to the high point there and just bring it down. And looking for the number, it was 18 on the receiving. Mm. Uh, Jaden Leonard. Leonard with a great grab at the very back line of the end zone. Puts another six. Here's the replay. Pace gets flushed out of the pocket and then has to put it up. And he does put it deep into the back of the end zone. A couple plays there for the Greenway. Just able to get up over the top. And they come down with it and we're able to to get possession inbounds. They go for two here again. And string it out here. Canyon trying to get around. He's nice got a job the green wave. Play. LeBlanc, that was LeBlanc out there. Nice job. Is that LeBlanc? I'm pretty sure it was. AJ Nash. That's AJ Nash, number 29 for the green wave, coming up and making that stop. Nice read. So actually, I think well, that was 39. 30. Chris Nagel had it over there. 53. Sorry, I'm way off tonight. We'll get confirmation. Andrew. Who was on that tackle, Chris? Who had the tackle on that? Three for us. Okay, number five for the Green Wave. Chris Patterson. Chris Patterson. All right. Nice job. Want to give credit? I saw the white sleeve, Sean. I thought it was AJ Nash. Larry Keo says it was said it was um number twenty two, Aiden McClellan. Okay. But we don't know. Now it was a I nice play. I forgot to write down how long that touchdown pass was, but I think it was twenty at least out of twenty three. I think it was about probably eighteen yards, Sean. You think? Well, then they have back five, so probably yeah. 20, 23 yards. All right, Hunter Burke's going to kick off with a now a 12-7 tight lead with only 23 seconds left to go. And that is going to remain in bounds at the 23-yard line. Naz picks it up. It's going to step out of bounds at about the 27-ish with 19 seconds on the clock. He's able to put some special English on that to keep that in bounds there, Sean. Nice, nice job of kicking there, able to keep that in bounds. First and 10 for Abington with the ball being marked and placed down at about the 28. See what Abington does here. If they try to go for the gusto here or just let the clock kind of roll out. Mm. Mark it at the 29-yard line. 19 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Maxwell out wide to the far side. Looks like Nash in the backfield. Salamini goes in motion to give to him around the left side. Salamini, still on his feet, bounces off the pile and then gets stood up after, after he picks up about two on the play. Yeah, I thought he went down there. He's just able to roll off that pile and keep moving. Picked up about two on the play. And that'll be the last play of the first quarter. Kevin, you got to take a breather. Yeah, I do, yeah. So, All right. You go home and recuperate and relax. We're going to be joined by Dana Maxwell in just a second for the rest of the game. We want to thank Kevin for being here. And I know Coach. All right. You betcha. We uh, jotted down some notes that if you were born at the tur turn of the 21st century and you played football for Abner High School, then you had Jim Keller as your head football coach. If you were playing Abner High School football when the first iPhone was sold, in the United States in 1997. Again, you had Jim Kelleher as your head football coach. If you played Abner High School football when the internet was created in 1983, Jim Kelleher was your head football coach. If you were playing Abner High School football the same year of the blizzard of 78, you had Jim Kelleher as your head football coach. If you were playing Abner High School football during our nation's bicentennial in 1976, you had Jim Kelleher as your head football coach. If you were playing Abner High School football when, the, when President Nixon resigned from office in 1974, you had Jim Kelleher 
as your head football coach. In fact, if you were born in 1958, when Dwight Eisenhower was the president of the United States, and you later grew up and played football for Abner High, then you had Jim Kelleher as your head football coach. That's the kind of legacy that Jim Kelleher has had in this community, and how many generations and decades of players and families that he's affected. And uh, we can't thank him enough for everything he's done. He's currently number four on the list of all-time winningest high school coaches in Massachusetts. And this is his 529th game as a coach. His last and final game will be the Thanksgiving Day game, the 530th game of his career at Whitman Hanson. It's an away game this year, 10 o'clock. Please be there because I'm sure there'll be a special tribute for Jim. And um, we uh, are looking forward to that. But we got a lot more ball game to play. And... The tide has changed now because none other than Dana Maxwell just joining me in the booth. Coming out of the bullpen, good to have you back here, Dana. You were here last game. Yes, thank you for having me. So the second quarter, we begin now with the Green Wave trailing 12-7. And no, about a game of two on the play there. You good? What do you need? You can't hear or you can't hear? Oh, I can hear. Okay. This can just, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah it'll work. Yeah. I can hear you. Dana Maxwell, a former uh, high school football player of his own, and he's got son number 18 out there. It's not number 18 uh, of number of ch children, but no, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> Uniform number 18. <laughs> Kingston Maxwell is now f out wide to the far side. Riley in the shotgun, peas to the near side. The slots. Riley throws, pulls up, stops Don't going deep. deep, looking for Salamini. Salamini puts the ball up, and it is oh, going to be no. picked off at the 40-yard line. Oh, he dropped oh, it. Oh, no, it's incomplete. incomplete. Nobody got the ball there. That was a little tip drill. Great play by Salamini to break that up. He hit it out of his hands at the last second. A good defense there by Will McNamara, number five, who is their number one receiver. Watch this replay here. Riley sets, trying to get, uncorks it down to Salamini's way. Ball goes up in the air. And you're right, Salamini with a good job making sure that there was no change of possession, but they will be here with the punt. Ball line of scrimmage at the 31. So Nash will punt, standing at his own 21. The receivers back inside their 40. Nash. This is oh, a he's going to throw. Come on, buddy. And it is incomplete. I like that look, but it's going to turn over the ball at the 31-yard line to the Titans. No time went off the clock there. Oh, did no, it did. It soon just went on the 11-minute mark. And waiting for them to move the stake. There they go. So Green Wave, the last game here, a little razzle dazzle. Mm -hmm. He would have had the first there too. Had enough yardage, but. So Pembroke comes out now at the Abington 31 with an even 11 minutes on the clock here. Pembroke would like to add to their 12-7 lead. Green Wave obviously would like to thwart that shotgun. They give left side, again, is their big fullback. Nice tackle. That was Tikhanov on the tackle, number 45. Brendan Kanya is the uh, number 34. He's a senior running back. And uh, yeah, he's he shown runs, some. He runs hard. Yeah. He runs hard. He's fast. Has one touchdown already and had a second one taken away from him on a penalty. Ball mocked at the 30, second and nine. Kanye White lines up wide to the far side. McNamara, number five, is wide to the near side. Owen Pace, the quarterback, has a blocking back with him to his right. The shotgun. Looking to throw, looking for Kanye and coming across. And did he catch it? He's got it. He did catch it down to the 20. Nice diving grab. I thought Tikhanov was going to have a play on it from his linebacker position. But Pace really zipped that one in there. Yeah. And then move the stakes down to the start at the 20-yard line. First and 10. Here's the replay. See a little slant pattern from the outside. Yeah, Tikhanov almost cut that off. Yep. So close. Could have been a potential pick six if you had maybe one and a half more steps. So out come the boys in their white away shirts, the Titans, the dark blue pants. Similar lineup, canyon out wide to the far side. 
put a man in motion. They faked the handoff. It was a bobbled snap, and Pace is going to be taken down for a loss. I'm not sure if he was intending to hand that off to the, the uh, motion man or if he was going to fake it, but it, that ball fell down out of his hands to his knees. He was lucky that ball didn't hit the turf. Now bring second and 22 at the 22. Sorry, second and 12 at the 22. And again, they come out with a spread. Two wide receivers to each side. McNamara is the right side slot on the near side of the field. Pace gives the handoff up the middle. Nice jump and there nice tackle. Go. Great tackle. That was, oh, of course, number 22, Aiden McClellan. Nice little running there by the running back, but McClellan was there as soon as his feet came back on the ground. Uh, McClellan put his back on the ground and did that run. Yeah, it's a tough uh, open field tackling. Not easy. Great job. Big third down here for the Green Wave defense. I like to hold them, give them a fourth and long. Canyon out wide to the far side and three wide outs to the near side. Timeout being called by Pembroke. Nope, now they got to run it. Coach waves it off. Third down, Pace rolling to his right, rolling, goes a quick out pass. Oh, oh, connects inside the 10, and he's going to be stood up and kept out of the end zone. Was that? Yeah, it was number five. He's the go-do man. That's Will McNamara, another senior wide receiver. I thought he was going to the, the short man and overthrew him, but McNamara was about five yards deeper and got that one in stride. So now it's first and goal at the two. 7.45 and roll in the second quarter. Abbott and bringing in some fresh bodies on the line. McSherry, number 73, Wojciechowski. All right, up on the line of scrimmage. Kenya in the backfield and the deep man in the eye. They stack it up on the right side. Will they go there? They do. And you're going to hold them. And it looked, it looked like uh, McClellan got to him first in the backfield enough to slow him up. And then yep. a bunch of other green jerseys plugged up the gap, gets a pickup of one, bring up second and goal from the one. Sherry taking a breather, number 73. Just adjusting my wires so I don't pull over the replay screen next time I move like I just did. Almost a tragedy up here in the booth in a technological way. They come out again now with pace under center. With confusion in the backfield. They're going to call timeout as number one Holtz and number 34 Kenya were trying to figure out how to line up in the backfield. So both teams have blown a timeout now. Dana, now you played against Coach Kelleher. I'm not going to mention what team you represented, but you played against him. And so you know the rivalry between, well, we'll we can talk. You played for Rockland High School. Sure. Um, and there was, has been a rivalry for years. And tell me about when you guys used to come to Abington to play or when Abington came to you guys to play. Always meant a little bit more than the other games. No question about it. No, It was, it was the, uh, the league Super Bowl for yes. us, you know. If we weren't going all the way, it was up about how, how can we beat Abington. Um, and it always, because you guys, you know, the Abington kids and the Rockland kids all knew each other. And obviously we still do. Um, so it was always... Not only that you're trying to beat the opposition, but you want to have bragging rights next time you bumped into your, your friends from Rockland or Abington at McDonald's or wherever it was. Oh, no question. We used to hang out at the Burger Kings and McDonald's, yeah. and, uh, you know, that would be the stomping grounds for the the real award right. of winning the game for that uh, for that year. How did you do? What year did you graduate at Rockland High? 91. So we, we won our senior year. We lost my junior year, but then we won previous years before that. We were... We were kind of the dominant factor at that time. And Abington, Rockland, before last year, well, let's get back to the game here now. It's going to be second and goal. What do they have, an extra guy in the field? Under center space, gives the cut. Nice. He and there's a flag. There's a flag on yeah. the field. Abington coaches were 
questioning what was going on there, and there is a flag on the play. So we'll see them sort it out. I think there's going to be a penalty to move them back off the one-yard line, which will be nice. But, yeah, even back then it was a battle. Every year yeah. you weren't sure because, you know, the, the team that maybe was not supposed Put to win the game off. would rise to the occasion. Yeah. It would rise to the occasion. So you, you always had a game. So they wave the flag off. I guess the play stands as, a, as no gain, and it would be third down, or did, are they going to say the play didn't happen? Wait a minute. Now there's whistles and a timeout being called by Pembroke. They want to punch it in. So I'm not sure if this is going to replay second or if we're moving it to third. What? A little confusion on the field. Coach Riley, Coach Kelleher are trying to get an update on what the status is right now. Now, last year, Abington beat Rockland 21 0. Prior to that, Rockland had Abington's number six years in a row, six right. games in a row. Six games, yeah. Prior to that, Abington, I think, won 13 in a row. Yeah. So it's been, you know, usually it was back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. And, then, and then all of a sudden there was a more, more streak issue. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And of course, the, the big game was. And I loved it. Abington Rockland in the Super Bowl championship at Gillette Stadium. It was a script. Now, of course, the better script would have been if the Green Wave had won for us. But it was just, I thought, appropriate and poetic that two of the strongest teams in the South Shore, you know, got to, to uh, Gillette. Because prior to that, they had reorganized the whole playoff system. It was impossible for two teams from the South to, to get to the championship. Together. Correct. Not to mention the fact that geographically, they're the tiniest little town. Yeah. I mean, they're right. so small, and they're right next to each other. So that was um, – we'll probably not see that again for quite a while. Yeah. All right. So it does read third and goal from the one. And we'll see what they do. They got three men in the backfield behind pace. Pace going to give it to Kanye, trying to get around the right side. Kanye gets hit, stood up, spins, and he's in from one yard out. The senior fullback picks up his second touchdown. And they are on the board at the 618 mark. And they'll go for the two point conversion, which thus far they've been unsuccessful twice in a row. Here's the replay as they just stack it up on the right side. And yeah. Kanya able to just bully his way through. Brendan he, Kanya. He does not go down first contact. Strong kid. All right, they come out for the PAT. They go in the shotgun formation. Again, confusion with the Titan uh, formation. Pace rolling to his right, looking to throw. Pressure. Open now he's got a man in the back zone. of the end zone, wide, wide open. open. Wide open. They lost control of, and again, number five, McNamara. And they put two on the board. So, well, he's excited, the referee. Yeah. So the pass to McNamara adds two, makes it a 20 to 7 game here, and the Green Wave will be receiving next kickoff. We saw the replay there from our crack staff. Six minutes to go in the second quarter. This is going to be a decent drive here, at least to get some time off the clock and hopefully get a score to put the half to an end. Or this game could get out of control. Yeah, as we mentioned at the beginning of the game, Pembroke plays in a very strong league. Mm -hmm. um, they come here three and six, but again, the first game they lost to Whitman Hanson, then they beat Austin Prep, they lost to Plymouth North, lost to Situate. Beat Quincy, lost to North Quincy, lost to Hanover, who's a powerhouse, yeah. lost to Plymouth South, who's always strong, mm -hmm. and then they beat Archbishop Williams. They average Plymouth, I'm mean, sorry, Pembroke averages 29.8 points a game, wow. but they give up 25.1 points. But again, they're a division higher than us in one of the strongest leagues in Eastern Massachusetts. Are they four or five? They're division five. They're five. Yeah. So they will be kicking off left to right to the Green Wave. Burke kicking again towards that sideline. Going to be grabbed right at the 25-yard line. It's like Salamini with it. And good coverage. Gets him up to about the 26. I thought I saw a flag being thrown in the pile there, but it was not. 
Oh, that was uh, Simonetti with the ball. This is a um, important drive. It is. You gotta have some. You gotta be able to move the ball here. Work the clock a little bit. Ball at the 27 yard line. Abbott comes out with two men in the backfield behind Riley. Salamini in motion. They give to Nash. AJ Nash up the middle. Goes by a face mask and he's still on his That's feet. That's nice. On his Come on, feet. first down. Push it. The push senior it. pushes it up over the 40 yeah. yard line. AJ Nash. Very nice. And a flag thrown oh, right on the 40. Are we going to stop this now? Well, let's see what the call is. Is there is was there a face mask in that pile or was there a really dig it up? Referee Skasha will notify us. Five yard face mask. Yeah, it is a five yard okay. face mask. All right. I don't know if it was the one that I saw early on or it was during the scrum. You can see the scrum there on our replay. Thank you, Ian Deming. And our crack cameraman, Dave. So, ball now right in front of us at the 47-yard line. First and 10 for the Green Wave. They trail 20-7 to here in the first half. The 10th game of the season. And a beautiful night for football here at Abington's Memorial Field. And the last game to be coached by Jim Kelleher here at Abington. First and 10. Man in motion, Salamini. Again, A.J. Nash up the middle. Nash driving forward. Nash up at the 45. Picks up eight. Won't go down, though. He's got a little buzz in his bonnet here. Yeah. I'll tell you what. On that possession there, Pembroke had ten guys in the box. Yep. They are up front just to stop the run. That's it. And they're not doing a good job of it right now. But they are selling out. Second down at the Titan 45-yard line. Maxwell out wide to the near side. Frazier's lined up the right side, tight end. Yeah, Wings how, on each side. Look how tight they are. Nash oh. in the backfield. Looking to throw is Riley. Riley is stepping up. He's going to be taken down, though, back at the 49-yard line. Needed about one and a half more seconds to go downfield. And he'll move the ball back now for the Green Wave. I want to remind you that John Favor Scholarship Night is going to be held on December 2nd from 7 to 11 at the Abbott and KSC on Hancock Street. $20 tickets to the door. You see the replay there. Raffles, food, music, and silent auctions. They've been running that event for years in memory of John Favor. They raise money for his scholarship. They give away to an Abbott High School student. Again, that's going to be December 2nd at the KSC. You can buy your tickets at the door and win tons of raffle prizes. Third down for Abington. They pitch right side. That's LeBlanc with the ball. LeBlanc's going to turn the corner. He's got a lot of real estate. Got it. Steps out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. They'll move the stakes for the green wave. For the green wave. Yeah, Pembroke's got they're, – they're playing. It's got to be tight. nine guys from tackle to tackle within five yards of the line of scrimmage. I mean, they're so tight. Those uh, outside runs could work out well. Yeah, actually, Kingston Maxwell, not because you're standing next to me, but came in and kind of sealed the corner there. And the Green Wave had, has had some pretty good success going around the edges. See if they try it again. Ball on the right side, hash mark. Shotgun, Nash in the backfield with Salamini. LeBlanc in motion. Well, Nash up the, right middle. Up the middle. Nash. There you go. A bull in a china shop. He's picking up five, six, seven yards every carry. Mm -hmm. You can just keep feeding him, and eventually he'll be in the end zone. This is the drive that we needed right here. Grinding the clock out, moving the ball, getting some confidence. Yeah, good discipline drive. Chris Patterson checks in for the Green Wave. We're at number five. Maxwell takes a breather. Coach Riley talking with quarterback Michael Riley and backup quarterback Jack Riley. There's a photo for the family photo mm -hmm. album. Second down and five. Patterson out wide to the near side. Nash again with the white sleeves, sole running back. Salamini in motion, looking to throw those. Riley stepping back. Riley's going to be He's open. open. Catch that. Let's go. Touchdown, Man of Muskegon. A 37-yard touchdown pass. Riley hit him in stride. And LeBlanc 
just glided into the end zone. Beautiful play. I'm telling you, we saw that coming, though. They had nine guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage from tackle to tackle, and you just got to get one guy to release right up the middle. Here's the replay. Riley said, nice pass blocking by the offensive line, and Riley hits LeBlanc in stride right on the 10-yard line. Wow, that was perfection. Everybody's creeping up to stop the run. Great, great, great call. I want to thank the Abingdon coaches upstairs who saw that set up, suggested that play. Oh, it's a fake. Riley to throw. He's open. He's up in the end of a corner. Here he is. Oh, He's got yeah. it. Let's go. The big tight end. Riley just alley-ooped it to Connor Pease in the back of the end zone. And the big tight end came down with the bear claws. Wow, what a difference. What a difference. If that had not worked out. Here's the replay. Pease releases. And Riley does the right thing. Just throws it up high. He was well defended. But Pease was just too tall. It makes it now a 20 to 15 game with Great the extra answer. eight points there for the Green Wave. Yep. Wow, a well thrown ball. And, and as you said, Dana, a well executed drive starting from their own 27 yard line. And just you saw a nice mix of yeah, passes and five runs. yards, six yards, seven yards a pop for running, a couple of nice passes down the field. It gives Pembroke something to think about. Yeah, and it's going to be a question. It looks like, you know, what defense is going to step up mm. and keep the other team's offense off the field because both teams are moving the ball. Abington sets up with an apparent onside kick formation. Now they spread it out with three minutes left to go on the clock here in the first half. They send Maxwell now on the far side. And Riley has it teed up. A high spinning kick going to come down at the 29-yard line where it's grabbed by the Titans. Take him down. Hey. And it's going to bring it return up to the 39-yard line. Tackled by uh, number two. Number th three. Reese Duncan. Simonetti. So the Titan offense will come out with 254 on the clock. Simonetti and Salamini have been great. Great, you know, workhorses in the backfield along with AJ. You know, they have a lot of options coming out of the backfield for the Green Wave, and they have a lot of players coming up for next year, too. And it's not easy when you're running back and you're, you know, sharing the ball amongst yeah. three and four players to get into the flow of the game. So hats off to them that they're ready to, to run when they get it. That's a great point. Great point, Dana. Hit, give up the middle to number 34. There he goes again, and he vaults over a man, and he's going to be... Taken down, thankfully, at about the 32-yard line, Kenya. Wow. He had a big hole at the line of scrimmage. Again, up the middle is a tough one. They get the they get the big bodies at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. But Kenya, as a fullback, has got some pretty good wheels. Yeah, he does. Yeah, this is right up the middle again. See the replay there. It's just, just getting the, tripped up and then finally taken down by, I believe that's Nash and Duggan. It's been a sore spot for our defense this year. A lot of these uh, good running backs uh, expose us up the middle. Ball to 33. Shotgun again for Owen Pace. Kanye to his right. They give to Kanye. Kanye stutter steps, tries to go left, but there's. That was. He was met by Tikhanov and La Rosa. <laughs> A little bit of discussion on the near side with <laughs> yeah. the wide receiver yeah. and the Abington defender. I think they were just making friends. Yeah. yeah. Second down and nine. Sharing cooking nine. recipes and the uh, line judge yeah. told them to stop talking so much. Well, we got to start talking about how to cook the turkey in a couple <laughs> weeks. So I think they were discussing, do you fry it? <laughs> second and nine with a minute 40 and rolling here in the second quarter. 20 to 15 the lead by the Titans. Again, controversy as they can't figure out who's lining up where on the far side of the field. Pace to throw. Pump, pump fakes. Fake. Trying to go down the sideline. Now he's Get got up. pressure. And he's going to be he taken goes. down. There we go. Good defensive sack there by the Avenue Green Waves. Jonathan Sharp Hunt. One of our big seniors who really answered the bell on that one. Junior. Jonathan is a junior. You're right. Thank you. Puts him back to the 41 yard line, brings up third and long now. Hunt just would not let him go. 
And thankfully, good. They were going deep. They were trying to hit a little stop and go pattern down the far sideline. Yeah, the guy you, tripped himself up on the on that stop and go. You might see something like that now. With fourth on the ball in the 41, third and long. Pace to throw. He's Look, deep. Yep, he's going down the far sideline. Yes! Knocked, knocked away. Very nice play. Michael Riley. Does what a safety is supposed to do with help over the top. Came away and took it away. LeBlanc on the coverage. See if we can watch that again on replay. That was textbook. Beautiful. Help from the safety, Michael Riley, number 10. Watch this replay now. Going down the far sideline, the man in white fakes it inside. Now goes down the sideline. LeBlanc's with him, and he can see Riley helping and just knocks it away. Yeah, that was LeBlanc had good coverage. The guy started to pull away a little bit. That was a beautiful pass, and if uh, Michael doesn't get his hands on that, it's a touchdown. So here comes the punt. High snap. Gets it up. One man back is Nash. Grabs it at the four-yard line. Nash, with no blockers in front of him, with the uh, one, one man back, they went for the to try to kick, uh, block the kick. So Abington will take over with just 22 seconds left on the clock. You might see him just kneel down here. Yep. With the ball, what are they marking, right at the 10? I'm happy to go into halftime down five. Yeah. That was a good defensive stop there for the green wave. The key play there was the Jonathan Shaw part hunt sack. And right before that, a huge, nice touchdown pass from Michael Riley to LeBlanc. And Greenway will come out to the line of scrimmage at the 10-yard line in a shotgun formation. Riley, handoff to Nash. Nash, right side, and he stays inbound, so the clock will continue to roll, and that will probably be it, sports fans, for the first half. Oh, wait a minute. A timeout being called by, by Pembroke. Pembroke. Okay. Interesting, with 10 seconds. Yeah, is not good. So, a little message from Abedin Cam. Do you have some free time to spare? Are you looking for a new hobby? Or maybe just have an interest in media and want to see behind the scenes of a production or start your own podcast? Abedin Cam offers beginning and advanced training for video production, podcasting, and social media marketing. For more information... Please visit abandoncam.tv and get involved today. And also, be reminded, Comcast and Xfinity subscribers, the three local channels channels that feature Abandon public education and government content, which is currently on channels 13, 14, and 15 for Comcast. They will be changing channels on starting on December 5th. The new channels for Comcast and Xfinity will be 6, 8, and 9. So the the uh, what you see on channels 13, 14, and 15 will change to channels 6, 8, and 9 only on Comcast and Xfinity. Verizon will not be effective. Affected. And Abington will line up just to down the ball here at the 13 yard line. Surprise, Pembroke took a time out there. Yeah. Seems silly, but make us snap it. So, a 20 to 15, a pretty uh, eventful first half, Dana. Yeah, it's fun to see a lot of scoring in the last game. You know, it, it really is, and it's exciting for you know all the kids get involved in there. They're, they're seeing a lot of play out there and some big plays from both teams. They saw a big long run by the Titans, a nice uh, pass play there in that last Abedin possession for the touchdown, and a couple of good defensive plays on both sides of the ball. So we'll be looking for a lot more of it in the second half. The Abedin Greenway will be receiving the opening kickoff here as we all celebrate Coach Jim Kelleher's career and his legacy here as 50 years as the head coach as he is walking the sidelines uh, for the final time here at Memorial Field. So Dana and I will be back with more second half action after the, se the, uh, after the halftime break.
hands. Let's hear it for the Abington High School Marching Band under the direction of Mr. Tim Leonelli. While the band is marching off the field, I will do my best to announce the members of the band. We have Mar Jimenez, Celia Killian, Patricia Bausa, Samaya Harrison, Moss Michelangelo, Neil, Arthur Sugarman, Gregory Fish, Charlie Hernandez, Sadie Hernandez, Cameron McNeil Berry, Maddie Sims, Riley Olmos, Duncan Hicks, Lucy Fish, Ava Farone, Aiden Carlin, Liam Clayton, Daniel Turner, Juliet Campbell, Riley Bruno, Connor McGuire, Emily Bruno, Margaret Russo, Kai Heefner, Kay Lalonde, Sophie Fuller, Emma Hart, Julia Riley, and Sally Hernandez, the Abington High School Marching Band. All right, we are back for a second half action. And you may have heard in the background, the Abner High School Athletic Hall of Fame has announced that Coach Jim Kelleher will be inducted into the Hall of Fame at our next ceremony in the fall of 2024. We'll talk a little more about that later. Here's the kickoff right to left. A lower end over end kick going to be grabbed by Duggan at the 21 yard line. Nate Duggan shifts and gets tackled down at the 35. Good return for the Green Wave. So the Abnon offense will go out trailing by five in a very exciting first half. With decent field position, 12 minutes on the clock. And they mark it at the 35. Dana Maxwell will be joining us back here in a few minutes. Riley gets the play selection from the sidelines and we are ready to begin with the final 24 minutes of this game, the 10th game of this 2023 season. Abner comes out with a spread formation once again. Pease on the far side, Maxwell on the near side. Riley under center. Man in motion. They give to the motion man, Salomini. Salomini looking for a hole. Turns it north-south and dives forward for about four. Going to bring up second down. I want to shout out to my, well, the grandparents, grandmothers of Michael Riley, the quarterback, are listening from abroad. No, actually, not from abroad. They're on a trip down south watching the game on a live stream. Ann Riley and Linda Russell. Hi, ladies. Can't wait to see you home tomorrow night. All right, back to the game. Second and six. Riley in the shotgun. Solomini in motion. Oh, ball's on the ground. Riley just has to smother it at the 35-yard line. Be a wasted down for the Greenway. Bring it back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 10 now at the 35-yard line. So Greenway will likely have to go to the air here. Dana Maxwell back in the booth joining us now. Here's the replay of that last one. Yeah, he had a little ex spent a little extra time there shaking hands with all his fans. Yeah, signing autographs. It's <laughs> tiring. It's a cross you bear. Riley in shotgun. Put a man in motion to the outside. Riley rolling to the outside. Now he turns he around. Goes. He's got a lot Lots of the field. Good blocker out front. It's Nash. Sits. Oh, he's going to be stopped. I thought he had the first down. And then he was stopped about a yard short. Oof. Look like from I mean it's easy from us up here seeing the whole field. Yep. That was a great play by that defender because Michael had a lot of room. We have fourth and one out to 44. See what the Green Wave does here in the opening stanza. We watch Riley looking downfield. Now he turns it upfield. And he's got to get to the 45 for the first. And it was number 44 who gets him with one yard short. See if Abner goes with a long, hard count. And they come right up on the line of scrimmage. Okay, here we go. They do. Riley, push. Riley with yep, the push. They got it, mark it. We got it. Yep. We Pembroke got it. thinks they stopped him, but the side, side judge is saying that he's on the line. 
the 45-yard line, brings up first down. Yeah, they're, they're already pointing to move the stakes. Riley's beyond, he's lying down beyond, and there is the Skasha first down signal. He did a nice little stutter step with that signal, too. Yeah, that's his uh, kind of signature move. Oh, is it? Okay. There it is. So why aren't we moving the stakes here? He's already signaled first down, the referee has. The uh, Pembroke coaches are questioning it. They want, what do they want, a measurement? It's a, it is, all, yeah, it's very say, close. It's not, it's not a great spot, first of all. No. The, so, and the ref now, what's he going to do? Call back the first down call that he already made with his special dance step? Yeah, I don't know why they put the ball back basically with the nose on the yard line. The ball looked, appeared to be over the yard line. So the biggest question here is... Pembroke says they stopped him. It's not right. It's not right. Well, no. they haven't said it. It's not right. It's a bad spot. It's, he already called it. Cut the... Sh <laughs> wow, that's controversy. What's going on here? He has to reverse that dance move that he made earlier. Wow. Is there a way we can get that replay up again? Come on. He was I over mean, the line. It was obviously a big scrum, too, to decide you know, where the ball was downed. But the near side line judge almost immediately said first down. The referee said first down. And then they put the ball back. And both guys running to the spot the ball on the other side of, the line, of that white line. This is just bad. Coach Riley's furious, as is Coach Kelleher. Just bad. Watch Pembroke now go deep. <laughs> Abner coaches aren't even off the field yet. What are we talking about here? You called the first down. Well, Abner coaches are still on the field. They're furious. They gave the right side. Nice tackle. That was again to number 34, Brendan Kanya. That that could be a game changer there. You don't know how that's going to play out. A pickup of two. Coach Lyons got all of his Plymouth State energy coming out of him. Coach Riley is still in the field arguing with the line judge. And there's a flag thrown. They're going to probably penalize the Abington sidelines. Yeah. But it's deserved. I mean, not the penalty itself, but the abuse from the it's, sidelines. It's, I'm going to go down there and start abusing people. I, I've never seen that. It's ridiculous. The head judge calls the first down with a special dance. And then they go and change the call. Referee Skasha coming over to talk to the Abbott coaches. Luckily, his microphone is off. Ref Skasha has been doing this for years, though, so he is a good ref. But uh, I don't, I don't, I can't explain how that sequence of events came. I didn't see the ball get placed, but we, I did see Michael get off the turf, and he was over. Well, let me the tell you, yard line. when they measured the ball, it was on the inside of the forty-five yeah. yard line. When they replaced the ball for Pembroke to take it, they put it on the other side of the forty-five yard line. That's wild. Yeah. Like they changed the position of the ball once they gave it to Pembroke. Yeah. And they, they just waved off the flag. Ridiculous. So it's a second down at eight. For a non-playoff game, these teams are both playing to win, obviously. And we'll see what happens in this little sequence here. Pembroke's possession, this second down. Shotgun for pace. Rolling to the near side, looking to throw. Going downfield, puts Kick it up that. in the air, and it is out there of bounds. Go. Nice job by Michael Riley Michael with the Riley. coverage. It probably would have been out of bounds had he come down with it, uh, either the defender or Michael. Pace kind of put that up a little bit too high. Um, 
Aiden Leonard Leonard was the intended receiver. That'll bring up a third and eight now. Ooh, baby. Controversy to start the second half. Not what I was expecting. Let's see if they go back to the running back, Brendan Kanya, or if they go to the air. They send number five, Will McNamara, out wide to the far side. Kanya is out wide to the near side. Pace in the shotgun. Pace to throw. Pace looking downfield. He's going to run. Now he puts it up in the air, and he's going to connect to McNamara. McNamara pulled up at about the 28, 26-yard line. He was just looking to get in between the zones, and um, Pace did a good job of threatening with the run, which made some of the secondary come up, so they get the first down at the 25-yard line. First and 10, tight. A uh, well-executed play there between the quarterback and the receiver. For sure. That's a tough p- tough position to be in as a defender. Yeah. you kind of stuck in the middle. If you stay back with the receiver, the quarterback's going to run the first down. That's it. Right? And you got to make a choice and go 100% one way or the other. The shotgun with Kanye in the back. They give to Kanye. Come around the left side. Gets hit at the line of scrimmage. Tikhanov gets to him again. Stands him up. And now his teammates come to help out. He could have having a good year yeah. for the Abbott Green Wave. He's a sophomore. Called his name a couple times earlier. It would be second and nine. Whew. I don't know if you heard uh, at the uh, right before we started, they announced the Abbott High School Athletic Hall of Fame is going to induct Coach Jim Kelleher into the Athletic Hall of Fame in the class of 2024. We do it every two years. So Jim Kelleher has been voted in. If you'd like to nominate any other player or coach, please contact any member of the Hall of Fame or the athletic department at Abington High School. They shift to the right side, look for the pitch to the right side. There it is to Kanye. We come up, break it up early. Kanye, nice nice play play up front. That was Connor Pease that got him through first. Somebody stopped the, um, somebody sealed the outside though. Yeah, and La Rosa came up to help after Pease got to him. And it'll bring up third as a loss in the play, third and 11. Here's the replay. Right there. Yeah. Uh, that was 22. Was right? 22. Yeah, 20, Aiden. He made that play happen. Aiden McClellan yep. just made came him flying turn, up. Made him turn up, and everybody else cleaned the play. Kanye out wide to the near side. McNamara out wide to the far side. Owen Pace in the shotgun. Looking McNamara's way. No, he's now he's going looking deep. left. Come on! Got a man oh, going to yeah, be connected yeah. for the touchdown on a well-thrown ball from the 26-yard line. And the Titans are on the board. they got a lot of weapons out there. To Jaden Leonard. That's a little backbreaker there just as the Green Wave made a couple of good defensive plays. And here comes the replay. Leonard just running a little uh, flag pattern. Going into the corner and right in the bread basket. Yeah, hit him in strides. So you got to give credit to the quarterback there. Good route. And you can't uh, can't teach speed. He just outran him to the ball. 26-yard touchdown pass makes it 26-15 with the PAT pending. Again, they don't kick. They try to run or pass each time. they got three men in the backfield behind pace. They give it to Kenya. Kenya. Kenya is tied up and Good. does not get in. Yeah. Again, the rush fails. Good job by the Green Wave. Brendan Limits it to six, a six point increase. He had a 26 15. And Pembroke kickoff team will come back on the field to kick off to the Green Wave. Coach Jim Kelleher, his 50 year career being wrapped up this year. He has been on the Green Wave sidelines for 57 of his 75 years on this earth, playing for four years, assistant coach for three years, and then head coach for 50 years. And uh, can't tell you, I just keep hearing all these stories from the guys from my age, from years before me, years after me, about what a guy he is. More than just a coach. He's been a father figure, a mentor, someone who stays in touch with his players well beyond their graduation. And um, he's just... A man amongst men. And we're certainly going to miss him on the sideline, but he has left a mark on this program that will never dull. Here we go now. Pembroke lines up. The white jersey standing at their 35, kicking off from their 40. And the Green Wave have Naz Spalding 
back deep along with LeBlanc. It's going Spalding's way. Bounces up to him in his hands at the 13-yard line. Naz over the 20, looking for a hole. He's Naz some moves, right. gets it up to about the 24 and then taken down. Good coverage again by the Titans. And the Green Wave offense will come out on the field with 5.46 showing on the clock. Well, we've been resilient up to this point, so I'm expecting the same. That we should be able to hopefully drive down, maybe get a score before the end of the quarter here. We've certainly been able to move the ball on both in the air and on the ground. I think Abington obviously likes to make sure they have control over the ground game as their, their fallback. And we'll see what they do if they try to go between the tackles again with Nash or if they're going to try to sweep it outside. Maxwell out wide near side, Pease out wide to the far side. And they got wings on each side, kind of slots with Solomini near side. And here comes Simonetti in motion. Riley's going to keep it following Nash's block. Not much there though, he gets stood up and taken down. So good defense by the defensive line of the Titans on the first down play. Patrick we'll bring up second down for Abington. Get amazed at how fortunate we've been this year with the weather on all of our games. Mm -hmm. You know, we haven't had that rainy game, that cold, windy night. We've been blessed with good weather, and uh, we really appreciate all the fans that come out here to watch these games. And, of course, the kids appreciate having the fans in the stands. All right, wideouts to each side now for Abington, second and ten. Oh, no. Ball's on the ground. Riley picks it up. Rolling, throwing. Come on. He That's connects. It. Get connects going. with Get Simonetti. Simonetti over the 45 to the 50. Simonetti down the field. There's the 40 and then knocked out of bounds in Pembroke Titan territory. Wow. Very nice. Nice heads up play by Michael Riley and Simonetti. Simonetti really staying in the play and then putting on his jets. Number three, three for the Green Wave. You watch the replay yeah. courtesy of Abner Cam. Riley steps up. Okay. So I want to know. Nicely done. Yeah, Simonetti just kind of ran out to the flats. I don't know if he just saw Michael in trouble or what. Handoff. A nice push and surge by the Green Wave. The right side picks up about three down to the Titan 32-yard line. 26-15 the lead here for the Titans. It was a 20-15 game at half. Simonetti going to take a breather. Coming down to 4.15 to go in the third quarter. Still a lot of time left in this game. <coughs> Greenway break the huddle. Again, Pease out wide and Maxwell out wide. Nash in the backfield. LeBlanc and Salamini are the wings. He goes LeBlanc in motion. They give to Nash up the middle. Big hole for Nash. Nash still on his feet. Come on, buddy. He's a tough runner. Yep. Gets up about a yard or two short of the first. And a nice big hole again at the line of scrimmage for the Abington offense. So the Green Wave now, third and two to keep this drive alive. McSherry over there on the left side along with Alex Mullen. Bodie Johnson out there. Nash lines up right behind the quarterback. They give dive left side. That's LeBlanc. Nice. LeBlanc inside the 20 yard line. Great run. I like. He just had two arms wrapped around that ball and went, ran through that line like a bowling ball. And it was a nice hole there. The line's doing well. And I'm telling you, Hembrick's entire defense is within five yards of the line of scrimmage. It's insane. Yes. Yeah, I so wonder why those deep seam routes are working. Right. High backfield now, LeBlanc behind Nash. They give to LeBlanc, left side, puts his shoulder into there it. LeBlanc picks up another chunky outage for the Green Wave. First down. Abbott and Lyman just firing off the ball and pushing the boys in white backwards. Will LeBlanc. First and Number 18, Jay Leonard. 233 and rolling. I know your clock on the screen is the unofficial clock. I backfield once again with LeBlanc lined up behind Nash. Riley gives to LeBlanc again, left side, follows Nash's block and the left side of the offensive line again just peels open a hole. 
And another big chunk of change by LeBlanc and company. Brings up second and goal from the three. This Green Wave team has just been marching this ball downfield when this started at their own 25-yard line. Let's see what they do if they do it again. Now they got Salamini lined up behind Nash, the big fullback. They give to Salamini right side, follows the block, and he's in from two yards out, or three yards out. Touchdown, Manamuskegan, Ryan Salamini. The sophomore. And again, credit to A.J. Nash, each one of those plays, he was the blocking back, really ensuring that that hole was about a truck wide. And the offensive line just dictated that they were going to move downfield. Yeah, A.J. is one of those do-everything teammates. Is the replay. You can see Salamini untouched until he got into the end zone. Green Wave will go for two now, trailing by five. This could make it a three-point game. Riley in the shotgun with two wideouts to each side. Put a man in motion. Riley looking to throw. He's looking for LeBlanc in the corner. And he's got it. He's got there it. Big go. play. Let's go. Woo. That That's was huge. a well-executed play. That's huge. LeBlanc just got over the line and turned left. And good coverage there. Very good coverage. By the uh, secondary. Yeah, great pass. Great catch. Under uh, excellent coverage. Here's the replay. Riley's got to really thread the needle here. And he does, and good job by LeBlanc holding on because he got popped as soon as he touched that ball. So we got a three-point game here, 26-23. And Abington will be kicking off. We saw an onside kick earlier. We saw a short kick earlier. Let's see if they uh, go deep on this one or... Sean, how important are those extra point, two-point conversions that we've been getting, and they haven't? That's right. I mean, right now we could be down by nine. eight points. Yeah. yeah, nine points. Riley will tee it up with his teammates on the 40-yard line. We haven't gone deep because, as I mentioned earlier, we we know that Pembroke has run back a couple of kickoffs for touchdowns earlier in the year. Yeah, I wouldn't be kicking it deep. Maxwell again deciding where he's going to be on the kickoff coverage team. Lines up on the near side now. The left footed kicker. Little, little pooch swim. kick once again. Going to be caught at the 36 and right. down with no return. We'll take that. Mm -hmm. Michael Riley's kickoff was down by the Titans. Now the Abbott defense. Got to step it up here and try to get this ball back, get the offense back on the field. But they've got a very potent Titan. Offense. It's it's it's, oh, it's interesting that both offensive lines are really running the ball. The you know, yeah, they are sure. controlling the game. Yeah, the defensive line hasn't been able to step up yet. They're opening up holes. They, they, both teams have really good skill positions as well. Yes. First down at the 36. Gave up the middle. And he still on his feet, but he's short of the first. Will. Will Johnson on Picks up near about uh, six on the play. Bring up second and four. You know, that the last defensive series for the Green Wave, we have it, it had a couple of big stops, and then they had the big play over the top, the pass for the touchdown. So Abington linemen have been, you know, trying to you know, just can control the line of scrimmage. Right. Yep. Put him into a long, a third and long situation. Pembroke was just able to succeed mm -hmm. that, with the conversions. Yeah. Let's see what they do here now with the shotgun and two men in the backfield. Kanye is the deep man. They give it to him over the right tackle, but he gets Come hit on. at the line of scrimmage. That's good. And they take him down, bring up a third down. Still in Titan territory. I want to remind you, this year's uh, Thanksgiving Day game, the 112th edition of the Abbott and Whitman Hanson Thanksgiving Day game will be played at Whitman Hanson, 10 o'clock kickoff. I really advise you to get there early because parking is always tough. you got to usually park and walk, get in line, get in the stadium. You want to be there early because I'm sure uh, Whitman Hanson's talking about some sort of presentation to Coach Kelleher before the game. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be a special game for Abington and Whitman Hanson. Hopefully the Green Wave will be victorious. The clock is rolling down here with just six seconds left on the third quarter clock. And the Titans will be happy to just catch their breath, go to the, line of, the uh, sidelines. 
And we've got 12 more minutes to go in a three-point game here. Division six Abington against Division five Pembroke. It's been a great game from the very start. Yeah. It's actually been one of the more exciting games of the season so far. Yeah. You know, there's nothing on the line so much for either team, but they've come to play. I want to thank the, all the guys in Abington nine, Cam. Um, we got some great video of Coach Kelleher coming down the stairs. He usually doesn't come down the bleacher stairs before the game. He's usually already on the sideline. But tonight, in tribute, Coach Kelleher came down the stairs and uh, had a bunch of alumni down on the track to greet him. And he took time to shake hands with every one of them. Uh, saw Mike Del Grasso, one of his assistant coaches, lives down in the Carolinas, who flew up here for the occasion. And that was a great surprise. And then, of course, he shook the hands of all of his current players. I want to send a shout-out again to all of our seniors, too, who are out there. Their last home game, Ryan Simonetti, number three. Number six, Will LeBlanc. Number 11, Nate Duggan. Number 22, Aiden McClellan. Number 29, A.J. Nash. 51, Andrew Kerr. Number 52, Connor O'Donnell. Number 54, Alex Mullen. Number 57, Steve Wojciechowski. Number 75, Faraz Ahmed. Number 76, Bodie Johnson. Number 81, Connor Olandella. And number 87, Connor Pease. That are the Green Wave seniors. And uh, they have been great leaders for this crew out here, this team. So here they come, third and a long two. Kanya is lined up, the deep man in the eye, Brendan Kanya. They put a man in motion on the right side. They just stack it up, and that's where they give it to. You no, know, he's going to throw, Oof. and they give it. Oh, he, just, oh. he fell, but oh, let's see where they mark him. Mm. Ooh, it's close. And, oh. you know, they owe us one here. They do. That's short. Gonna that's going to be short. The pass, it was a nice little out to Will Johnson, number 44, but he slipped. At the 46. Well, let's just see if the guy with the white hat does his special dance. If he doesn't, then maybe we're... Fourth down. Fourth down. He should look up here. We'll tell him. They're going to bring him in to measure. Okay. Let's hear it for the Ooh, I think that's a fourth down. I, I agree. While we're waiting for the crew to come out from the sidelines, uh, being told by Kevin Tachi... The man behind the curtain that Abington Cam does plan to live stream the game on Thanksgiving morning, but it's worth going to this game. There's so many people there, alumni, family and friends. It's, I, it's a social event and um, really look forward to it every year. Is there a m mimosa bar uh, uh, running? No? It's, it's, sure. it's a VIP bar. Either. It is. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Have connections. I don't have the connections, but I'm just hoping that. Well, now that you're working as part of the Cam crew, you might get there. Yeah. Let's see how they stretch it out. Fourth down, right? Okay. They're going to go for it. Why not? Yep, so we're going to have to. I want to thank Mr. Ridden, Mr. McGuire, Mr. Wakeland, and Mr. Nash, who are all out there volunteering on our chain gang, chain gang crew. So the ball is going to be marked just inside the 41. It'll be fourth and in inches. This is when you want either a five-yard penalty on the offense or a fumbled snap. Yep. Should be easy to get a couple of inches. I would think so. And you would think they'd play it smart and just have a quarterback sneak and not try to have an exchange or a yeah. pass, but we've seen different. They come out with a spread formation. Oh, boy. Okay, you got really quarterback get under center. Pace blitz, calling his cadence. He goes blitz. forward. They stopped him. I don't think so. Don't even. Nope. No way. No way. That is going to be very close. Don't even stop. The guy in the near side. Not even close. Don't know. Let's see where they put the ball down. That's going to be measured it's either us. way. It's about time. Got one call for us. Here we go. Here's the replay. Slow motion from the boys in Abingdon Cam. They're going to bring the, the chains in once again. Wow. Could this be poetic justice yeah. if the Green Wave have stopped him here? All depending on the ball placement. Ridden and McGuire carrying the stakes out. Ooh, baby. Well, you'll know if the boys in green erupt or not. 
They stretch it out. Yes, oh, it's short. Here we go. All right. Green wave defense. All right. All right. Ball don't lie. Big defensive stand there. With 11.30 on the clock, Abington trails by 30. I mean, yeah, by three. It's 11.30 on the clock. And now they take over with the ball in Titan in, on the Titan 46. 11.30 left. Here we go. Ooh, baby. Yep. <laughs> we could get Two controversial fourth down plays. One for each team. Yep. Big hitter here would be nice. First and ten for the Green Wave. One of those down the seam, deep, deep plays. Simonetti, a quick dive over the left side, picks up about three quickly. Bring up second down for Abington. Ooh, baby. Abington Green Wave football is Sean Riley and Dana Maxwell bringing you this Abington Green Wave football action, the 10th game of this 2023 season. Abington with a 6 and 3 league record. Pembroke with three and six, but we mentioned earlier that does not dictate or describe the quality of this team. Some of their top players were hurt throughout the season, right? Mm -hmm. And they play some really strong teams in that division. Similar formation, Riley under center, second down. Gives right side, Salamini. Salamini turns the corner, still on his nice feet. Job. Gets up to the 40, maybe just beyond the 40. It looks like he's beyond the 40, but yet they're marking it. Salamini does not go down when you think he's going down. He runs through arm tackles, yeah. keeps his balance, excellent balance. It's one of the things he has. Just a sophomore, so you'll see a lot more of him next year. And remember, we've missed Mason Nash for the, the majority of this season, another sophomore stud running back who injured his knee early in the season. So he's going to be one of the Greenway's best kept secrets. No question. He was on a frantic pace. It was sad yep. to see him go down. Third and four at the 40 yard line. Maxwell out wide to the near side. Riley making sure everyone's lined up in the right place. LeBlanc steps back with Nash in the backfield. Simonetti moves in motion, looking to throw. Pass. Go, Riley go looking downfield. Go deep. Oh. oh, in and out of the hands. It would have been enough for the first, and it'll bring up a fourth down conversion for the Green Wave at the 40. Woo. <laughs> this is an unbelievable game. Oy. Fourth and four. Abington, I'm sure, will go for it here. 9.50 on the clock remaining in the game. So that's one of those rollouts where Michael is usually able to navigate to maybe run for that first, but they did actually pursue and stop him for that. Yep. So, uh, Slot good, good on both here. sides. P's out wide near side. Maxwell far side. It puts Simonetti stacking it up on the right side now. Riley rolls to the right side. Got a blitz coming from behind. Riley run out of time. Puts it up in the air. Little jump ball will be incomplete. It'll be a turnover of the possession. So back and forth we go here. Good coverage again downfield. The secondary has been pretty strong on the deep balls for Pembroke. And now the Pembroke offense will come back out on the field. 9.42 on the clock. Line of scrimmage. Again on the 40-yard line. And Abington defense going to be asked once again to answer the bell. Trailing by three, 26-23. Ian, Dave, Matt, and Kevin doing all the work behind the scenes here for Abington Cam. The shotgun with two, two running backs. Kanye in the, the deep man in the backfield. They give to the up man. Stutter steps number 44, and he slips and falls, but no, he said he was on his feet, gets it up to the 45 of the green wave. That was carried, I believe, my 44, Will Johnson, one of the captains. Must have got a hand down when he slipped. Will Johnson, Second time we've seen him slip in the last five minutes. So a move the stakes, though, for the Titans first and 10 now on the green wave 45-yard line. We've got to seal that middle. That's where they're getting all their chunk yardage, right up the middle. Johnson lines up in the backfield with Pace. Slot formation on each side. Pace gives to Johnson. Johnson kicks around the right side, spins on his feet, dives forward. 
22. Good tackle. Yeah, that's Aiden McClellan. Kept him inside. Three, second and six. Second down and five for the A chilly night here at Memorial Field, but it's no breeze, which is nice. The temperature has now dropped to 39 degrees. No one's complaining out there in the field, though. They're, they're nice and warm running up and down the field all night. Second and six. Owen Pace again in the shotgun. Pace nice. looking to throw left side in the flat. Break they connect. Out. Number 18, Ooh. Leonard. Leonard gets downfield to about the 20 yard line. Good pickup. Yards after carry for Jaden Leonard, who has one of the touchdowns earlier. They'll bring up first and 10 right on the 20. That's a good block by that receiver downfield there. <laughs> kind of broke him free. Tough play to stop. It's a good receiver right there. All right, so they get the play selection from the line of scrimmage. I understand Rockland lost big tonight to Clinton. Sorry to our fans in East Abington. Cardinal Spellman the also lost. Tickets, Did they? Big. Shotgun again with two men in the backfield. They give to Johnson. Johnson dives forward. Stays on his feet. Johnson stutter steps, spins, and gets it down close to the 10-yard line, close to the first down. Johnson, Good running by Johnson. Didn't didn't see a lot of him earlier in the game, but he's showing what he's worth right now. It brings up second and one. Seven minutes, 50 seconds to go on the scoreboard clock. A three-point difference right now. Be a good time for a fumble. Titans up to the line of scrimmage. Again, they got Johnson, number 44, Kanye, number 34. Kanye, the man behind the quarterback, gets the ball right side following Johnson's block, but he's stopped. Might have enough of the first when he fell forward. No, they're saying he's down before the 10. Bring up third down in one. Interesting. <laughs> Coach Dave Lyons, a former uh, linebacker, coaching from the sidelines. You can see him animated. Talking to his linemen and his linebackers, along with Coach Daly. They line up with a tight formation, the offense. They give right side. Kanye stopped. He's going to be held up. It's going to be a fourth down play once again here at the 11-yard line. Great job by Dave Lyons to pack everything in. Looked like they kind of brought everybody up. Stop that run. P's getting credit for that tackle and had to help from a lot of other people. Now, fourth and one. Green Wave defense stopped them in the last series on a fourth and less than one. We'll see what they do here. The Titans, as they're talking on the far sideline, their junior quarterback, along with Coach Alborn. Aborn, I should say. Coach Aborn has his son also coaching with him. A lot of talk here. Are they going to let the clock roll down? Try to take time off the clock, apparently, because they're afraid they don't get the first down. Abner gets the ball. Mm -hmm. How's that for confidence in your offense? Interesting. Yeah. So timeout called on the field. Remind you again, once again, Thanksgiving Day game at Whitman Hanson. The Abner Green Wave against the Whitman Hanson Panthers. Always love that game. Always a good time to see people. It should be a great game this year. And uh, seniors. I want to send a shout-out, too, to the Pembroke seniors. Nehemiah Holtz. Gerald Ellison, Will McNamara, Evan O'Brien, Andrew Chahid, Brendan Kanya, Will Johnson, Cam Wilson, Hunter Burke, Cole Griffin, Mina Saman, Turner Gilmore, Patrick Norman, and Caleb Jones. I hope I got them all. Uh, it is their last game of the regular season. They'll be playing Silver Lake for their Thanksgiving Day game. Where do you do th uh, Thanksgiving there, da uh, Dana? I'm going to host... You're gonna host. Family. Yeah, I'm gonna host some family. We don't. It's we don't cook. Yeah, everyone else that comes cooks. That's a good deal. Yeah, so I'll take it. If you don't bring your food, you don't eat. Exactly. That's, That's great. That's it. Uh, we host too. My lovely wife Kathy and uh, other other members of the family cook up uh, always too much food. 
but it is great to have a football game between Abner Whitman Hansen and you go home and have a nice dinner and you fall asleep watching whatever game is on TV. All right, here we go. Fourth and one from the 11 yard line. High backfield. Congratulations. They pitch to the right side. Leonard trying that's, to get around. That's it. Green wave straightening him out. And it's there we go. Him down back of the 19 Let's yard go. line. Wow. Big defensive Huge stand play. by the green wave, and it's Abington ball. 5.55 on the clock. I am shocked that they I didn't try to go up the middle. I can't believe it. It's number one, our weakness. Number two, their strength. How do you not go up the middle? I don't get it. And they pitched to a running back who's really a receiver, number 18. They didn't use Johnson or Kanye. And a, a loss on the play back to the 19, a loss of eight. Strange. We'll take it. First and 10, Green Wave on their own 19 yard line. So Abington at their 19. I need another just determined drive downfield, chewing up yardage, taking time off the clock. And hopefully take the lead for Jim Keller. Mm. Riley puts Simonetti in motion. Riley to throw, quick button hook. It's a it's a hook and get pitch. going. Going down the All sideline right. as Nash gets the first down. Okay. Up like at the it. 33. The pass to Pease, who pitched to Nash coming down the sideline. Good old hook and ladder. Yeah, and if not for that one yep. D back, Nash had a lot of real estate. Watch this replay. Connor just turns right at the 25 yard line, and then Nash takes the pitch. Yeah. And good defensive play, but they get the first down for the Green Wave at the 34 yard line. We've seen a couple of razzle dazzle plays tonight. Junior quarterback Michael Riley in the shotgun once again. Takes it himself over the right side. Spins Hold away from ball. a tackle. Okay. And Hold that ball. Picks up about two on the on the play. Michael took some hits there. Yeah, he did. Spun away from one, got hit, Michael but comes up with five and a half minutes to go. It's always the concern when you're trying to get those extra yards. You got to tuck that ball away. Yep. Is it really obviously a turnover at this point? Could be the game. Second and eight, according to Steve Wakelin, who's the, the man with the box on the far side. Ooh, what a game. This has been an exciting game start to finish between the Titans and the Green Wave. Maxwell out wide to the far side. Pease out wide to the near side with slot receivers inside each. Now Solomon in motion. Looking Pass. to throw is Riley. He's going. Riley is going to throw down to Aye. Nash. Just incomplete at about the 42-yard line. Tough break there for the Green Wave. Ooh, baby. Third down and seven. Oof. I don't know if that was a blitz. Well, I think I didn't see the replay, but it looked like he got it in his hands. He just uh, couldn't hold on to it. Green Wave come out the line of scrimmage. Shotgun for Riley, third and seven. Got to get it up to about the 45. Yeah, this is four down territory. Uh, that's a pass interference. There you go. They throw the flag. Big play there because absolutely. Pease was coming right across. Maxwell saw it from up here. Ooh, baby. So that's going to be a penalty on the Titans. It'll give the Green Wave the first down. Referee, referees. Fifteen yard penalty Ooh. is a replay. Wow. Watch nice. Pease now slanting right across the, the middle there. Yeah. And he gets hit right before oh, yeah. the ball gets there. Close, but it was. And there's the Skasha. First down. <laughs> Love that. Well, if you look at the play, if he doesn't get hit, it's a, a catch up on top, you know, yeah. pretty much at his helmet. Uh, instead, he gets hit, and unable to get his hands up and make the catch. So, so it moves it now to the Titan 49-yard line. First and ten, Green Wave on the Titan 49-yard line. Abbott comes up to the line of scrimmage. 
Having a crowd cheering. They give it right side. Simonetti. Simonetti looking for the hole. Simonetti dives forward. Picks up about three or four. Very patient Abington running backs, letting the, the blocks develop. Kevin Whalen checking in by text, want to know what the score is. He lives literally on the other side of the trees from Memorial Field, so he can hear the announcements, he can hear the crowd, but he's home convalescing after shoulder surgery. <laughs> Second down in seven. Ball at the 46. They pitch, coming near side, student body left, Salamini, full speed, gets tripped up though as he passes the line of scrimmage, but picks up another three or so. Bring up a third down play. Yeah, third and about four. Mm -hmm. Now down to under the four minute mark, we're down at 350 and rolling. Abington trailing by three. Third down and four to the Greenwood. So here we go. This is uh, probably going to be a run play because you're in four down territory. So Nash and Salamini in the backfield. And are you kidding? Flag thrown. The flag Say a motion, field. a procedure on Abington. Flag was thrown on the far side of the field. So instead of a third and four, we make it a third and nine. Well, who was he calling it on? Well, Abington's moving their huddle back. Procedure on the green wave. Makes it third and nine. I didn't see anybody move. All right, they line up the ball up now at about the 48 yard line. Green Wave got to get it inside to 39. Well, that hurts. So now you're looking at a pass break. This might be an opportunity for Michael to run with the ball, too, if yeah. he kind of clear the zone. Like we said, that, that rollout that he does, yeah. where he picks, uh, whether he's going to throw it to the flat, throw it deep to a, a post or, or a flag pattern, or he runs it. Could be right here. Three receivers on the right side. Simonetti on the near side. Looking to throw. Gonna it. Riley is going to lose his footing yeah. and not get much on that play. It'll bring up a fourth down for the Green Wave. Looked like it was a setup as a quarterback draw. There was also confusion in the formation for the Green Wave right before the ball was snapped. So here we go with another fourth down play. These teams are back and forth. Fourth down and nine for the Green Wave. Fourth and nine at the Pembroke, 48. Maxwell out wide to the far side with single coverage. Everyone else tight right now with Nash in the backfield. Looking to throw. Looking for he's Pease. He's going deep. He's got Pease. Oh, Pease up in the air. And he's and got he it! Down with he's got it! Outlet. Let's go! Whoa! Unbelievable ball! Beautiful play! Michael Riley just feathered that one in, and the Connor Pease with double coverage, men hanging on him, goes up and comes down with the catch of the year. Out, that, down at the 18-yard line. Watch this replay. That is one of those plays where you give the receiver a chance. That's right. You get it into his airspace, and Pease knows how to jump. Riley puts it up. Over out jumps two defenders. Look at the coverage on that. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. Nash, handoff up the middle. Nash still on his Hold feet. Hold the ball. Spins. Get still going, dives forward to the 11-yard line. Picks up eight yards. Green Wave clock under two minutes to go. Wow. Hello, Berlin, Germany. Are we in China or Japan today? Do you know? Connor's mom is in Germany right now watching this game. Oh, I'll take it. It is about, what, three in the morning there, somewhere? Well, she tuned in Ooh, to baby. a good one. Timeout on the field with 1.47 on the clock. Abaddon trailing by three, but they are moving the ball once again. Wow. You hate to see any team lose this game. Yes. They both played great. Good defense, good offense, exciting. Fourth down stops. Unbelievable. So, both teams get in the huddles, talking about what to do next. Woof! Unbelievable. I want to thank you for tuning in to this Abbott and Greenway football action. I want to thank Dana Maxwell for joining me in the booth with 
Yes, Kevin's painkillers were uh, kind of rubbed off after the uh, first part of the game. Well, wait, Sean, I did ask him for a couple before he left. So, yeah. so you're good. If, if I'm extra excited tonight. <laughs> it's all due to the uh, the medication, <laughs> huh? Yeah, my shoulders have bothered me as well, but I show up. I also want to thank Clem Leary, who's up here in the booth helping up Chris, helping out Chris Nagel on our public address system. And I got a shout, shout out to Pete Serino and Bud Madden, who do a lot. Uh, Pete Serino is our athletic director, and Bud Madden is his right hand man. Here we go. Third, uh, sorry, second down. And about, call it three at the 11 yard line. Waiting for everything to get set up here. We got Nash and Salamini, uh, sorry, and Simonetti in the backfield. Salamini in the slot with Maxwell out wide to the right. Give up side up the left side Simonetti. of Simonetti. Simonetti Grinding inside the five. First, first. first down, first and goal for the green wave. They will stop the clock to move the chains, which will just be really moving the yard marker at the where are we? The four, the three. Third and goal. I'm sorry, first and goal at the three is the replay with Simonetti straight ahead, just following the linemen. McSherry, Bodie, Mullen. First and goal at the three-yard line. 120 and rolling here. Greenway puts six on the board. We'll take the lead. Nash and Simonetti in the backfield. Man in motion. Rather gives to Nash. A.J. Nash. He's in. Forward. He's in. Touchdown. Let's go. Muskegon. The Green Wave. Come on. With 104 on the clock. Take the lead. 29 to 26. Watch. A.J. just lowered his shoulders, hip height, and just drove. Here's the replay. Nash, number 29, we're in the white in the backfield. Follows Simonetti's block, and look at the blocks of the offensive Beautiful. line. 104 on the clock here. And the Green Wave will have the opportunity for the point after and see if they go for the two, or if they kick, they're going to go for the kick. Now we know that Pembroke doesn't have a kicker for point out for uh, field goals, so they're going to have to score a touchdown if they have any shot. Ball is down, kick is up, and Riley puts we'll take it, it through the uprights. We'll take it. All right. Wow, what a thrilling finish here for the Green Wave. Just got to keep Pembroke off the board. We saw them have some breakaway runs for touchdowns. So it ain't over, sports fans. It's far from over. What we've noticed, Pembroke gets through that first line of defense. At any moment, they can break it. They got some really tough backs to bring down. 81-yard drive for the Green Wave. And I could kiss the guys in Abbott and Cam for being here to put this game on video for posterity's sake. Jim Kelleher's last home game here at Memorial Field, and if things go our way for the next minute and four, it'll be a triumph for the Green Wave and for Jim Kelleher. Pembroke's got a great quarterback. They got great receivers. They got great skilled running backs. It's uh, far from over. From and now the question is, do you risk kicking it deep just to get better field position? It's a tough call. Right. You don't want to give him short position at the 40. So, Green Wave will kick off. You almost want to angle this and take a risk of kicking it out of bounds, and then they only get it at the, what, 35? Well, they can make you kick it again, they though. They can make you kick it again. A lot of wild cards here. So, yeah. the so they're long going line drive kick is going to go kick. past. Yes, That's it's a great roll. kick. That's going to stop. He's going to have to pick that up. He picks it up at Let's the goal go. line. We got to oh, get Oh, they say he went into what? the end zone. When it, if his foot was in the end zone, he can't run it out. Are you but really? that's okay. okay. That's, that's going to put him back at the 20 or the 25. That's the rule. That's the rule. Wow. So a great kick to hit by Riley. He's having a whale of a game. See the ball rolling down inside. And he has one foot in the end what? zone. Oh, we need to zoom in on that. <laughs> <laughs> so they do mark it at the 20-yard line. 104 on the clock. Pembroke at their 20. Let's get a pick six here just to lighten it up a little bit here. Yes. They spread it out on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, the junior quarterback, and they're going to be a timeout called as the teams go to their sidelines. Baby. Oh, baby. What a ball game. Oh, 
Abington scores with one minute and four seconds left on the clock to take a 30 to 26 lead. And now Pembroke has the ball at their own 20. What I'm concerned about here is they've shown the ability to break big ones through tackle to tackle as well as through the air. So right. it's it's not like we can sell out now and kind of drop back in a dime package for passing because yeah. they could run it up the middle. That's right. And once they get in the secondary, we have a difficult time tackling them. They're, they're strong, so I'm nervous. Well, great time for that big interception or that fumble recovery for the Green Wave. Who wants to be a hero? That's it. Oof. God bless America from the band. I mean, how can we go wrong right now? All right, here comes Pembroke now. First and 10 at their own 20. Again, the wideouts, two wideouts to each side. Pace has one man in the backfield as a potential blocking back. Shotgun, Aiden back, going across, across the, the middle. middle. He connects, oh. and he's going to be tackled and inbound. Keep him in bounds. No, 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 out no, 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 no. He right. stopped for progress. You can't stop the clock there. Well, they're going to they're going to stop it just to move the stakes. Oh, right, right. Connected to Leonard, number 18. Leonard brought down by the Green Wave. 52 two, seconds on the so clock. Pembroke has to score a touchdown. Here's the replay. Because they a uh, field goal, a three-point field goal will not be enough as they trail by four. Ball's on the 41 now, first and 10. These guys out there are going to be exhausted on both sides of the ball. It's been back and forth all night. One man on the near side, three on the far side. Watch the near side man. They like to go to the uh, single pass. Now they're going, he's rolling to the far side. He's taken down. Oh, breaks away from LaRosa. Puts it up again. Interception. And throws it out of bounds. Good play. Good play Smart by him. Play. And a flag oh, throw. Oh, no. Oh, they're going to say a rough on the passer? Seriously. I didn't see the hit, but it looks like their quarterback is injured. <laughs> Behind the play, I didn't see it. Um, I'm assuming that's Pace who's down on the far side. So what could have been an incomplete pass may be a penalty now. You see Pace, the quarterback... The ropes has him, gets away. Now he throws it and gets hit after. Hey, that That's was close. A bang bang play. You do not throw a flag on that with less than a minute to go in the game. He's one step away from the hit. Can't throw a flag there. So. They're. they're Sorting it out on the field where they're going to line it and the line of scrimmage will be. Whew. Pace coming back into the game. This is just. Uh, he took a shot to the rib cage. I didn't see the number of the truck that hit him. Now it's the ball is at the Abington 44 with 43 seconds on the clock. Oh, what a nail biter. So let's see, is the QB in? He is. All right, well. They get, they're trying, still trying to sort it out the other guys in the vertical stripes. We got Brendan Kenya out wide to the near side right now with McNamara, number five, in the slot. Oh no, they are taking him out for a play, unless they burn a timeout. Go. Well, that's, yeah, exactly. That's why I was questioning it. If he goes down, they stop the clock, he has to come out. Right. So Pace will go to the sideline, and we'll find out who their backup quarterback is, which I'm assuming might be number 10, Michael Giese. And I guess why isn't the clock running? No, look at this. They're going to have number 34, Brendan Kenya, line up as the quarterback. See if he just runs the ball or throws the ball. He's running. First and 10 at the 44. Kenya looking to throw. The left-handed quarterback puts it up going down the left sideline. There you incomplete. go. Good play. I think that was LeBlanc over there. Yeah. Good job. Second down. And Pace will likely come back into the game. Not much time off the clock, though, with the incomplete pass. will stop the clock at 37 seconds. Whew. Here's the replay. 
This kid can. He can do it all, apparently. Good play. All right, here we go. Second down. Ball eyes on the 44-yard line. Again, Kenya and, and McNamara out wide to the near side. Pace looking their way. Get some pressure. Get him! Get him! More pressure now. He throws the outside. He's going to connect, but going to be well short of the first. That was to McNamara at the 38-yard line. Stops the clock with 29 seconds to go. Bring up third down. Third and about four. It's a good route. It's a good route and a good pass. McNamara's got great hands. He's, yeah. he's a tall kid, too, so he's a great wide receiver, very athletic. I think he's um, being recruited to play in college, I believe. Have you heard that? I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, no, I've heard that maybe it's a, a Yukon is what it was. Uh, the Huskies. Reported. Three wide receivers on the far side, one on the near side. Shotgun again, third and four. Pace. Fades back. Now to throw the far side. We got coverage, yeah. It's nope. incomplete. Here we go. Here we go. Going to bring up a fourth down play once again. How many times have we said that with 22 seconds left to go? Whew. Ball marked at the Abington 38. Fourth and four. Jeez. And timeout being called by Pembroke. I am surprised that they have not have utilized the spread offense like they have now and not run it up the middle. Have a little draw play. Have a little draw that. play. I mean, you've got number 34. Who, who, I mean, you could have two guys right. trying to tackle him. He can still run. Yeah, and it's just Once uh, he's in surprised. the secondary, he can break away. He can break away, so watch out for that now. I mean, that's a risky play on fourth down, but still, you never know. The same high school football team for 50 years. Prior to Chris Nagel. Pembroke. Pembroke has no timeouts left now, which may be a very important element here if they get this first down. That will kind of require them to stay in with the passing offense. If they get the first down, the clock will stop as they reset the chains. If they don't get the first down, the clock will stop because it will become Abington's ball, and the Green Wave can just kneel on it and savor this victory. Yes. For the history making head coach Jim Kelleher. Chris Nagel reading off some facts and figures about our beloved head coach Jim Kelleher. Right, here we go. All right, fourth and four. Again, they go trips to the left side, one one wide out to the near side. Four Owen Pace. Fading yes. back. Looking to throw. Steps up. Goes down the middle. Oh, his no, receiver fell over. down. It's over. And that ball will be turned over to the Green Wave. What a tough break for the Titans oh, as they went to the number 34, Brendan Canyon, who he slipped. Was wide open. He was. Oh, boy. I feel for him. He's had a great game to have an end like that. The gods are looking down on Jim Kelleher in the Green Wave tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you feel for the, the kids. Just that's a tough, tough, tough. Here's the replay. You watch the, the receiver comes from left to right. He's open. Great job by Pace picking up on that. The ball was a little short on the throne. But now with the ball at the 38-yard line, the Green Wave can kneel on the ball can just kneel down because the Titans have no more timeouts left. They'll get in their victory formation, and Jim Kelleher will be leaving Memorial Field with one of the most thrilling victories we've had all year. And the Green Wave and the Titans shake hands. A well-fought battle, an exciting battle. Like you said, it's a shame that either team had to win, but of course, if we get to pick, we, need we'll to, we want the Green Wave to win it. Nine out of ten times. What a way to celebrate a legacy. And Jim Keller is hugging some of his assistant coaches down there on the sideline as the teams line up for the handshake. Uh, just one of the best games of wow. the season. So it's, much fun. It started off with a 15-yard touchdown run by Mike Riley, and the PAT made it 7-0 at 447 in the first. And then on the first play from scrimmage, their second possession, the Titans had a 68-yard run by Brendan Kanye, but their rush was no good, made it 7-6. Green Wave came back, I'm oh, sorry, the uh, Titans came back with a 26-yard pass to Jaden Leonard, making it 12-7. to And then they also added on a one-yard run, making it 20-7. to That was Kenya with the run, and a uh, pass to Will McNamara made it 20-7. to LeBlanc with a 37-yard pass, a great ball thrown by Riley, made it 20-13 to after the nice pass, the PAT fake really to Pease. They threw it to him in the back of the end zone, and that's what it was at the half. Green Wave down 20-15. to The um, 
Titans struck first in the third quarter with a 26-yard pass to Jaden Lennon again, making it 26-15 after the rush was no good. And Salamini then put the Green Wave back on the board with a three-yard touchdown and a pass to LeBlanc, made it a 26-23 Titan lead. That was 137 in the third quarter. And then the uh, Green Wave defense stopped the Titans on a fourth and inches. Abner got the ball back. They had a fourth down. was incomplete. They turned it back over to the Titans. The Titans had another one at the 11-yard uh, line. Sorry, at the Abington 19-yard line, fourth and one. The Green Wave stopped them, got the ball back, and then they marched downfield from their own 19-yard line, capped off with a three-yard A.J. Nash rush and a Riley PAT making it 30-26, to and then you just saw the way it ended. Yeah. What a game, Dan. What, what a game. game. It felt like at any point a back-to-back -back score by the same team would have put the yeah. game out of reach, right? But it, everybody kept answering, both sides. A great game. And a really great tribute. And you can see Coach Jim Kelleher now having the team uh, circle around him. And this is just such a poetic ending to a tremendous career here at Memorial Field. Of course, he has one more game. That'd be Thanksgiving at Whitman Hanson, 10 o'clock on Thanksgiving morning. Get there early because it's going to be a crowd. And parking is tough there. you got a, a distance to walk. But what a what a thrilling game. 30-26 to 26 is the final here at Abington. And we saw a little bit of everything here tonight, Dana. Yeah, that was fantastic. It was probably the best performance that the offense has had against a decent, yeah. if not better than a, a good defense. And Pembroke's final record of 3-7 and seven is a shame because that, that does not represent the quality of the play Not at all. from those guys on the Titan squad. It's it's the second weekend in a row where we played a team that was underrated. Yeah. I mean, Stoneham's a fantastic yep. team. I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the Super Bowl. That's right. That's right. And uh, i just so happy for Coach Kelleher and his team. Uh, like Every kid had put everything into it tonight and we saw a contribution from all those guys in green and now they're circling and hugging their coach, Jim Kelleher. 50 years of success here at Memorial Field, and they're chanting Green Wave pride there as they surround their coach. Unreal to watch from the start to beginning, from Coach Kelleher coming down the bleachers, being greeted by his alumni and his team, and now, again, circled by his team, everyone with smiles on their face and a little bit of exhaustion. Well, that will be it from here from uh, Memorial Field. I want to thank Dana Maxwell and Kevin Whalen. My name is Sean Riley. All the guys that helped out, Matt, Dave, Ian, Kevin Tachi. It's a team that puts it together. I want to thank uh, Chris Nagel and Clem Leary, who are up here in the press booth doing the PA work. Everyone else who contributes behind the scenes. But congratulations to the Abingdon Greenway football team, and especially to head coach Jim Kelleher on a tremendous victory here at Memorial Field. Once again, for the last time, final score, the Abingdon Greenway 30, and a comeback victory against the Pembroke Titans 26. We will see you on Turkey Day.